Greensboro, North Carolina. Pete Adrian of Norfolk State on the right. Lee Fobbs on the left as the Yankees and Spartans prepare to do battle next. ESPN Thursday primetime college football presented by Buffalo Wild Wings comes to Greensboro, North Carolina for a MEAC matchup as the Aggies of North Carolina A&T host the Spartans of Norfolk State. Hello everyone, Charlie Neal, and I'd like to take this opportunity to welcome you to Greensboro, North Carolina, where the focus this past week around town and around the state has been on an unfortunate incident that took place at the end of last Saturday's game between these Aggies of North Carolina A&T and the Eagles of North Carolina Central University, in which a scuffle broke out at the end of the ball game. Now, that scuffle resulted in the suspension of a player from each team. The player from North Carolina Central will have to sit out one game. The player from North Carolina A&T will sit out the next two ball games. Let me bring in my partner Jay Walker and Jay unfortunately that all the focus has been on that incident. Well, if they're playing on Thursday night it's not a distraction enough. The coaches have had to deal with different aspects and A&T had to deal with the fight as well as how to end a 20 game losing streak and for Norfolk State head coach Pete Adrian he's had to deal with can his team handle early success. When you talk about Norfolk State here's a team that's trying to do something that they have never done since joining the MEAC back in 1997 and that is go 2-0 in conference play and they're going to do it with the quarterback Kate Casey Hansen. Casey Hansen has to play like the big time leader he was recruited to do by Coach Adrian. When he's playing well, he's the most effective passer in the MEAC conference. This season, he's yet to throw a touchdown pass. It's time for Casey Hansen to start playing good football. When you look at the Aggies of North Carolina A&T, they're hoping to jump start their offense today with running back Mike Ferguson, who's the third leading rusher in the MEAC. You know, I like to say that Michael Ferguson is a little engine that could for North Carolina A&T. He's a guy that's very dependable. He plays every single play while he's on the field. And if North Carolina A&T or when North Carolina A&T breaks their 20 game losing streak, it's going to be because of Michael Ferguson and his production. 33rd time that these two teams have met. Norfolk State won it by 22 points a year ago in Norfolk. We'll be back with the opening kickoff in a moment. Erupt. ESPNU Thursday night primetime college football presented by Buffalo Wild Wings and we're here in Greensboro North Carolina on the campus of North Carolina A&T it's Aggie Stadium for this meeting the 33rd time that the Aggies and the Spartans of Norfolk State have gotten together in fact last year they won that is the Spartans of Norfolk State and, and that was uh, up in Norfolk and a few moments ago there's Monique Johnson an honorary captain of tonight's ball game and uh, out there for the coin toss she's a junior here at North Carolina A&T University she's a business administration major and she's uh, had some physical deficiencies and overcame dwarfism and scoliosis and coach uh, Lee Fobbs talks about the fact that she's been a great motivator and inspirator inspiration to the team on why you never hang your head. I think every now and then in, in society as in general as a whole we take for granted the little things in life that we've been given in terms of having the ability to have all your limbs and these young athletes in particular I mean these are young athletes blessed with great health and you have to realize hey if she can overcome all of her setbacks she's had physically then they need to overcome their setbacks they've had in terms of lack of success on the football field and it was a great move by coach Fobbs to name her honorary captain. No question about it and of course the Spartans are coached by Pete Adrian who's in his third year as the head man up in Norfolk after spending a number of years as the defensive coordinator down in Daytona Beach at Bethune Cookman College and you see his record 10 and 15 and he's got his team rolling pretty good this year 2 and 1 1 and 0 in conference play something they've never done their only loss came to Rutgers a nationally ranked team and on the other side in his second season Lee Fox he's 0 and 15 they're trying to snap a 20 game losing streak they were 0, 0 and 5 before he got here or they lost five straight games and now they're on a 20 game losing streak which is the longest in the nation. 
combination. I think if you're Lee Files, all you have to do is look across the sideline at Norfolk State coach Pete Adrian. When he took over the Norfolk State program, they were down in the dumps. He brought them back, and that's a program that he would like to mirror with the short-term success here at North Carolina A&T. When you see coaches like Adrian and Fobbs, you realize they're great coaches in this conference from top to bottom, and these are two of the younger coaches in terms of tenure, but they're very good coaches. Well, you know, you're talking about uh, losing streaks. Uh, the longest losing streak in 1AA history, I believe, belonged to Prairie View back in from 89 to 98. They lost 80 straight games, followed by Columbia between 83 and 88. They lost 44 games. St. Francis of Pennsylvania lost 30 games between 99 and 02. Canisius lost 24 games along with Indiana State. And right now, knocking on the door, not a record that you're very <laughs> proud of, are the Aggies of North Carolina a and I, I think they need to put an asterisk by Prairie View A&M. I mean, they lost 80 consecutive games. Unlike Columbia, where Columbia was in the Ivy League, they don't give out scholarships in the Ivy League. Prairie View lost 80 games while they were members of the SWAT conference where everybody else had full scholarship commitments. And this is what we've been waiting for, game ball being brought in. Well, I don't see the ball. Has he had the ball in his hand? I see a helmet. Maybe he's waiting for his partner to bring in the game ball. There's still somebody else coming down he's from the, the heavens line. above. Yeah, he's the O line, and then you got to bring in the fullback behind him, and they got the running back coming after that. The quarterback. <laughs> <laughs> and the quarterback is the guy in the helicopter about 20,000 feet up high. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> and when you talk, and there's the ball, I believe. No, no that's not the ball. Here comes uh, one more jumper coming out. I believe the last jumper down will have the ball. So you see the ball? Yeah, the second guy got the run. The, they gave it. They, they tricked us. They tricked us. They gave it to the fullback on the dive option up the gut. And there's one more. <laughs> Here comes quarterback. The quarterback. And look at him landing. He's about three yards shy of the 50, so he don't get a first down on that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I want to measure it. Measure it. <laughs> He's going to be a little bit short. Well, you talk about losing streaks. You know, there are four divisions where we talk about NCAA. And, of course, the, the championship subdivision is where the Aggies are, which was formerly known as 1AA. But in the bowl subdivision, Division One, Florida International has the longest losing streak. They have lost 16 straight ball games. And uh, that used to belong to Duke University, but they won the other week. So, therefore, they, they've gotten out of that slump. In fact, when we were here a couple weeks ago, we were talking about three North Carolina teams when the record book Appalachian State for was on a winning streak Duke was on a losing streak a t was on a losing streak and then of course Appalachian State who beat Michigan in the opening game of the season loses to Wofford last week yeah there's no gray area in the state of North Carolina either winning real big or you're losing real big and right now the North Carolina a t Aggies are losing real big but they're gonna make some effort and they keep on getting better getting closer and closer as evidenced by last week's five-point defeat to North Carolina Central. And the longest losing streak in the nation is a Division II school, St. Anselm, up in Manchester, New Hampshire. They've lost 22 straight games. They last won back in September of 2005. And in Division Three, the longest winning streak belongs to Lewis and Clark out of Portland, Oregon. They've lost 21 straight. They last won a game back in 2004. By the way, Lewis and Clark is where Monica Lewinsky went to school. That, that's why you're the man, Charlie Neal. Would have never even bothered to research that. a t on the return of the opening kickoff. The Aggies bringing it up the floor and up the field. And that is David Robinson on the return for North Carolina a t So the ball will be spotted at about the 27-yard line, and that's where the Aggies will go to work. First down and 10, their first offensive possession of the evening. And their quarterback today, Herbert Miller, which is kind of a surprise because a couple of weeks ago they thought he was lost for the season with a knee injury. He got injured against Prairie View, and uh, he's in there starting this ball game. Actually played last week, last Saturday, against North Carolina Central. Going back to pass on first down. Now he's going to take off and run. Miller slides across the 30 to about the 31-yard line. And let's look at the offensive alignment for the Aggies of North Carolina A&T. The down linemen, Chad Wiley, Jonathan Carter, Timothy Best, Andrew Sagot, and Juan Williams. The backs and receivers in the backfield. We talked about Michael Ferguson. There's Ortiz Green, the fullback. The wide receivers, Curtis Walls, Giorgio Lawrence, and Michael Christen. It's second down. After a gain of two. Three. Good call. And now coming to the near side, 
Quarterback back to size and keep it turns it upfield and still on his feet and runs out of bounds at midfield make that Mike Caldwell on the end around and uh, he picks up the first down right at midfield Norfolk State's defense the line Dennis Marsh Eric Bullock and Brandon Daniels are the down linemen the linebackers Jason Dent the twin brothers McWell and Marquez Davis along with Dante Hodge and in the secondary Dustin Johnson Jamie Short Terrell Whitehead and Don Carey so it's a first down for the Aggies who are moving the ball in their first possession and this is a team that has everything to gain nothing to lose and they keep straight ahead and the running back is into the secondary and that is Ferguson and Ferguson is stopped shy of the goal line right at the one yard line so a great run by Ferguson 52 yards on that run I think what Coach Fobbs, an offensive court, the offensive coordinator for ANT is trying to do is give you some misdirection just to get the ease off of the pressure up the middle. And then what do they do after the misdirection? They hit you hard up the middle, straight up the gut. Michael, Michael Ferguson, we talked about he's dependable. He's their workhorse. He's a big play running back for North Carolina ANT. 74 was his previous long. That one going good for 52. And this time, taking it in is McNair. And they score. This doesn't happen often this year for the Aggies of A&T. Is Dion McNair, number 29 there, the sophomore from Randleman, North Carolina. That is his second rushing touchdown of the year. And the Aggies draw first blood. So fans are cheering early. Eric Houston on to attempt the point after he has not missed this year. He is perfect at six of six. This one is up. He just made it. <laughs> and it's good. But it's a seven to nothing ball game. Boy, they didn't take long to put points on the board, did they? No, it was a great job by Michael Ferguson of running through the arm tackling effort by Norfolk State. And if you're Norfolk State, you've got to be very disappointed in the lack of effort by your defense on the first unit. But Coach Pete Adrian being a defensive coordinator before prior to becoming a head coach you know he's got some words for his defense on the sideline but what a great effort by Michael Ferguson and more importantly these are the first points that the Aggies have scored in the first quarter all season long they were outscored 24 to nothing before this ball game and now they get their first points in the first quarter this year we've said it time and time again you know they've got a great environment here and the fans really are a great 12th man for North Carolina a and and if they can continue to get better you know we've seen them in spurts play toe-to-toe -to -toe with Hampton defending black college national champ we've seen them at spurts play toe-to-toe -to -toe with North Carolina Central and some of these other teams so they just haven't had the maturity level to capitalize when they had the lead and looks like coach Bob's is getting this team to believe and they're growing and they continue to get better week after week four play drive and they take it all the way down for the touchdown it is the Aggies of A&T this will be Howard on the return for the Spartans gets a block turns the corner still on his feet and up to about the 48 yard line on the return so good field position for the Spartans with their first offensive possession and there's what Rashad Howard has done this season in kickoff returns ranked fourth in the MEAC as a return man and that's a sign of a young team. You get an early lead, you get some success, and then your special teams let you down by giving Norfolk State great field position on the 48-yard line, basically midfield, to start off their offensive drive of the game. Casey Hansen is the quarterback. One lone setback behind him. That's Darryl Jones going back to pass on first down. And this one is incomplete. Going out to the flat on the far sideline, Jeremy Wicker was the intended receiver. There's Hanson. He's a junior, redshirt junior out of Corona, California. And this is what he did a year ago against the Aggies, 11 of 17, 287 on a touchdown as they came out victorious in that game, 42 to 20. It is second down and 10. Stands in there, throws, has a man for first down, and it's complete down to the 36-yard line. And on the receiving end for the Spartans of North Carolina uh, for is Darrell Dickerson, number 16. And there's the offensive alignment for the Spartans of Norfolk State, Raymer, Banks, Nance, 
Cresson and Carlton Ford, Calton Ford, the down lineman, the backs and receivers, Jones Moore, Dario Walker, Jamar Johnson, and Dexter Bailey. And they lost all of their big play receivers from a year ago, the Spartans did, but Coach Adrian feels that these kids uh, may be a little more talented. Thought he, did a, thought he made an upgrade to his personnel. This time it's Daryl Jones, and Daryl Jones still on his feet, carrying people for about three. Let's look at the Aggie defense. The down lineman, Tyre Glasper, Kelvin Jackson, and Keith Holliday. The linebackers for the Aggies, Andre Thornton, Robert Russell, and Jamison Hedgepeth. And in the secondary, Shahid, Colbert, Crowley, Ruffin, and Michael Pace. After a gain of two, it'll be second down and eight. Again, Daryl Jones. You know, Jones is a load. He's lost what about 20, 30 pounds from a year ago. He was up around 250 or maybe 260, 270. He's down about 240 now. Yeah, I mean, he's a load for our viewers that have never seen Norfolk State player Daryl Jones play. I mean, this is the HBCU version of the bus. I mean, he's a big guy. You'll see guys just bouncing off of him as the game goes on. He wears you down, averaging almost five yards per carry with six touchdowns. And he's one of those backs that he gets stronger as the games go on. And it's for a man of his size, 250 pounds, he's got very quick feet. Well, and the Aggies down man is Keith Holliday, number 96, defensive end out of Woodrow Wilson High in Washington, D.C. But you're talking about losses from the Spartan offense from a year ago. One of the men they lost was a running back by the name of Monty Anthony, who gained over five, almost 600 yards a year ago. And then there was another young man named D'Angelo Branch, who's a great outside speedster who gained 371 yards, but he was academically ineligible this year, but they will have him back and he'll still have three years to play after this year. And both of those guys were speed backs, you know, the type of get around the edge back. And Daryl Jones was the fullback and they converted him to tailback with the loss of those two individuals. And I think Jones is kind of at his natural position. He's a tailback by, by, by trade. But you have quick feet like that and the ability to make people bounce off of you. So he's very excited. He worked on his quickness in preparation for playing tailback this season as opposed to fullback like last previous season. And they uh, came up with a big win last week, beating Bethune-Cookman 38-31. And it was uh, Daryl Jones who had the big game. Four touchdown pass, uh, four touchdowns, I should say, running the ball. And we'll be back in a moment. Seven nothing our score. The Aggies on top, and there's Mr. Holiday, Keith Holiday, out of Washington D.C. Woodrow Wilson High, a little shaken up on the last play. We're being replaced in the lineup by Antonio Johnson, number 81, from the shotgun. Hanson throws over the middle, and it is complete. And it's J Jamar Johnson, the big kid, at 6'3", 220 pounds, former quarterback. And they tried him at a couple positions after they moved him from quarterback, moved him over to tight end uh, because of his size. But you see, he wasn't very enthusiastic about blocking. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure as a former quarterback, I wouldn't be either. But, you know, he's one of those guys that he makes big plays. He was on the scout team, and he kept coming up with big catch after big catch against the defense. Now he's a starting wide receiver for the Spartans. And it's a first down run. And it's Darrell Jones going straight ahead down inside the 20 to about the 19, 18-yard line, a gain of two on the play. And, of course, the defense of the Aggies of A&T coming up with a big stop. Tyre Glasper was the man who made the stop that time, number 94. And it's important right here that this Aggie defense has the bend but not break mentality. Right now, Norfolk State is in field goal territory. But make sure the defense doesn't give a touchdown up so the offense can play with the lead. Know that their defense is going to be able to handle their job tonight. Hanson looking to the air. Throws. Caught. First down at the 15-yard line. And he's eating him up, and that's Dario Walker. On the previous play, it was Jamar Johnson. Uh, and they, you know, you're talking about Mutt and Jeff. These two guys are roommates, and they're opposite in terms of size. Yeah, they are. You know, when you're talking about the Mutt of the Mutt and Jeff, this is it right here. You know, smaller wide receiver, but he plays pretty big right there. He goes up and he grabs that ball, that five foot eight frame of his, and comes down with the reception. 
they say he may be the fastest man on this team and they're comparing him a little bit to Santana Moss the young man who plays up in uh, Washington DC well, that may be getting a little carried away but <laughs> This time, Daryl Jones straight up the gut, and Daryl Jones is inside the 10. Down to the 8-yard line, so you're talking about wearing people down. This drive started at their own 48. Remember, they got a good kickoff return after the Aggies scored, and they started their own 48-yard line. And that's why the key to having a good offense is having a good one-two punch. You can't be one-dimensional. Early on, had the offense not converted on those passing situations on third and five and third and eight, that they would have been on the sideline, but because they were able to keep the drive alive, that allows your running back more opportunities to get involved in the offense to keep the running game strong. Second down and five for the Spartans. Hanson working under center. Daryl Jones again. Daryl Jones inside the five. Touchdown, Norfolk State. That's got to be disappointing. How does a man that's 5'10", 250 pounds go into the end zone almost untouched with one guy trying to make the arm tackle? You've got to do a better job of locating the football on the defensive side of the ball. 52-yard drive for the Spartans, and now Justin Castellan, the sophomore out of Virginia Beach, who's only missed one extra point this year, and that came last week, puts this one up. And the ball game is all tied at seven apiece. 10.03, the time remaining. And we're here in the first half. Daryl Jones, four touchdowns a week ago, one already here tonight. All tied at seven apiece here, and Daryl Jones goes into the end zone for the seventh time this year. Nine plays, 52 yards. They used up 333 off the clock. He's off to a good start on the year. Anytime your starting running back has seven rushing touchdowns on the year already, All right. I mean, that means he knows how to get to the pay dirt. So Coach Pete Agron has his offense on the right track this season. Robinson chasing it down for the Aggies. Feels it at the nine-yard line. David Robinson coming back up the field, still on his feet, and finally brought down at about the 31-32 yard line. So that's where the Aggies will get the ball for the second time this evening and as a penalty marker down you're talking about Daryl Jones and the six uh, touchdowns or seven he has already this season Jay he had 118 yards a week ago against Bethune Cookman and was voted the MEAC offensive player of the week 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul first down the commissioner of the Middle Eastern Athletic Conference is Dennis Thomas Dr. Dennis Thomas and he's joining us by way of telephone right now Dr. Thomas uh, good evening thanks for joining us and you know just a quick uh, remark about the unfortunate incident that took place here between the Aggies and the Eagles of North Carolina Central and the conference's stance on it at this point well Charlie it's a really un unfortunate situation because it was an outstanding game uh, both teams really exerted himself uh, in the effort to, to win the ball game. And it's just unfortunate an incident that uh, happened maybe for about a minute and 30 seconds uh, uh, caused all the publicity to overshadow the game. But uh, the, the conference is reviewing information and, and obviously the institution has uh, enforced some penalties uh, to certain players. So uh, we'll, we'll see what the final outcome will be. One of the things we do know, and I just want to ask you, I know the Aggies, uh, uh, should say the Eagles of North Carolina Central, have made application to join the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference. What is the status of that application at this point? Uh, those applications, uh, or well, that particular application and others are on hold right now, and that's been on hold since this past uh, April. So this incident you don't think would have any kind of bearing on uh, their future plans? Well, Charlie, I, I can't uh, comment on, on that question you just asked me. All I can tell you that well, months before this incident happened, the conference decided to uh, uh, put all uh, uh, membership applications on hold right now. Commissioner Thomas, what everybody really wants to know on the outside looking in, from your research, was this an avoidable situation? Well, I, I guess uh, I would have to say in a situation that... Uh, uh, develops into unsportsmanlike conduct can be avoided. So uh, I would have to say, uh, you know, both teams have to exert 
and demonstrate good sportsmanship, maintain control over your emotion, whether you're winning or uh, the loser of the game. We expect uh, our institution to demonstrate great sportsmanship before, during, and after the game. Yeah. And then lastly, Coach, uh, Commissioner, I'm sorry, there's been talk for years about the MEAC going to a north-south format, and obviously North Carolina Central joining the conference would have been at the center of any type of expansion. Does this hinder any future expansion talk? Well, well first of all, there has, there has been no decision based upon a north-south division. So that's, that's a, bit, a bit premature, and the conference has not made any decisions regarding going into uh, divisional play for basketball or football. All right. Well, Dr. Thomas, it's always a pleasure talking to you. We'd like to thank you so much for joining us and uh, hope everything uh, works out as far as the conference is concerned. Of course, Winston-Salem comes in next year. That gives you 10 teams yes, well. as far as football is concerned. <laughs> 12, well, Winston-Salem uh, is a part of our conference now, as you know. They are uh, in the compliance period with the NCAA, and they won't be an active member if everything goes right, in which we expect that to happen until the 2009-2010 season. All right. Well, thank you so much, and uh, I'm sure everybody's looking forward to it because they've already wreaked havoc in the conference so far this year. <laughs> and That's thank right. you. Well, Tyler, you and Jay, take care. All right. All thank right. you. Dr. Thomas, he's be excited. Yeah. He's got the number one team in all black college football in his conference, the Hampton Pirates up the road, and the ranked number 12 in the latest FCS, FCS poll. poll there. So, <laughs> you got it, Jay. Me, me, I'm getting better. I'm, I'm getting better. I studied. I was a quarterback. I can memorize certain aspects of the playbook. While we were talking to Dr. Thomas, you saw the Aggies push back from the 14. Wound up punting from the four. Short punt. And now the uh, Spartans have it with a short field. They got it at the 29. And now it's a now Darryl Jones busting off left side. Still on his feet. First down before he's finally pushed out of bounds on the far sideline. So Daryl Jones continuing to pick up where he left off with 118 yards a week ago that earned him player of the week in the conference. And take a look at the right side of your monitor. You'll see Daryl Jones coming that way. Doesn't get touched until he's eight yards up the field. The left side of the line for Norfolk State is doing a great job, and that's Andrew Raymer and Jamie and Banks. They each go 6'4", 280 pounds, followed by that 250-pound fullback. They're having great success running the ball on the left side of the line of scrimmage. First and goal at the seven-yard line. Jones Jones again still on his feet and Jones carrying people down inside the five to about the three. You know, he's really fun to watch. I and mean, I like, it reminds me when I used to play John Matt when it first came out. You know, you could push the button faster, and the faster you push the button, the people would just fly off you <laughs> and act like they had no technique on their tackling form. And Daryl Jones is like that. He's like having Kevin Mack back in the day. You remember Kevin Mack yeah. playing for the Cleveland Browns? Well, that was my team when I played Tecmo Bowl when it came out. And Kevin Mack would have people flying off of him, and Daryl Jones has Aggies flying off of him right now. You saw that graphic, and he has the ball right now. The team has seven touchdowns. Or he has seven touchdowns. The team has one. Everybody else, <laughs> he's, he's been their offense this year. You know, and that's the key. What we talked about in the open, it's time for Casey Hanson to throw some touchdown passes. I mean, when you but got, why? When if you, you don't have to. I, I agree with that one there, but there's going to be a point. You put, it in the, to put it in the air. What can happen? Three things. One good. I like the first one. You can throw a touchdown. <laughs> <laughs> the incomplete pass, hey, it happens. And the interception, quarterbacks don't talk about interceptions. <laughs> But it's, it's reasons like right now, you know, when you need to have a good play action package in which you can throw the football. Andre Cook is in the lineup, the second back in the eye. And it's a play action, as you said. He's looking, looking off the hands of Andre, uh, Daryl Jones, rather. That'll bring up a fourth down. And they'll bring on the field goal unit. And that was an opportunity for Hanson to pick up his first touchdown pass of the year. And Daryl Jones is a pretty good pass receiver. Yeah, he is. But, you know, that's a tough one here. Obviously, when Casey gets flushed out of the pocket, he puts a little extra zip on this because of the down and distance. And that's just one that Daryl Jones has to make that catch. And typically, you tell young quarterbacks, when you throw the ball to running backs and tight ends, you don't put it out there where they have to reach their hands and extend their hands. You want to put it right on their gut, in their stomach, where they can body the football in. 20-yard field goal attempt by Justin Castellet. He is five of six this year. And as long as it's 41, Coach says with a good win, he could probably hit him from about 50, 55. Coach AJ is very confident about his kicking game coming into this contest. And 
and he splits the uprights and the 20 yard field goal is good and the Spartans rally from seven down they now lead it 10 to 7. Sure. Feel like Tony Bennett want to sing Moon Over Greensboro, huh? Hit it for me, Charlie. <laughs> Hit it for me one time. Great night here in Greensboro, <laughs> North Carolina for football. Castle it to kick it off. David Robinson, the deep man. And it's going to be a short. Out. And it was a short kick. No chance of a return. And up to the 32, 33 yard line. Don't forget, you can see the future stars of football today as ESPNU delivers the Old Spice High School Showcase. It comes your way Friday night. It's a New Jersey showdown. North Bergen facing St. Peter's. The Old Spice High School Showcase presented by Nike on ESPNU Friday night at 8 Eastern. And for more, log on to ESPNU.com. Along with Jay Walker, Charlie Neal here in Greensboro for this MEAC matchup between the Aggies and the Spartans at the own 34 yard line North Carolina A&T gets the ball for the third time this evening trailing by a score of 10 to 7 523 left and we're in the first quarter they took the opening drive down the field and scored going 70 three yards four plays and the big run was a 52 yarder by Mike Ferguson that helped set up the touchdown Good pad level. One thing about Michael Ferguson, he's going to give you 100% effort every time he touches the football. Junior from Northern Durham High School. He plays some pretty good football down there. No, yeah. My old college football coach, Steve Wilson, is from Durham. Alumnus of Northern Durham. Ferguson with the ball right now. And Ferguson trying to go to the right side. And that defense of the Spartans of Norfolk State starting to stiffen on that far sideline. You've got McWell Davis over there as you look at Mike Ferguson. 100 yard games, previous two seasons, three. He has two already this season. So he's making a mark for himself. Every position on this team is getting better. And, and he's averaging 114 yards a game. So just, that's pretty good. You know, what I like about it, he's the junior. He's not a senior just trying to play well as senior year. So you got the nucleus at your running back position. Can you go out and recruit some skilled positions in the trenches? Some skilled positions as well as in the trenches. Look out. This should be intercepted in his court. Through the hands of the defender and into the hands of the receiver for the Aggies. And that is Chaz Dawson, who was alertly there to get this pass. It should have been intercepted. I mean, Boy, you're talking about ball bouncing the right way for you. Uh, that's what you need. You know, typically when you're in losing in the games, you get you don't get breaks like this, but this is a clear interception here that was just dropped by the defensive player that couldn't get his hands on. That's Anthony Alumba, the strong safety. And Cass Dawson said, wow, look what I got for Christmas. Well, the catch. Yeah, Alumba will uh, have nightmares over that uh, missed opportunity. So a first down and across midfield, and the Aggies are in Ferguson on the carry. Spartan territory. And Ferguson on the carry down to the 43-yard line. You know, it's, they needed something like that. Actually, A&T needed that pickup because after the opening drive, they had the crowd into the game, and then Norfolk State ran off 10 unanswered points. Had they come up with another three and out or that turnover, it just would have deflated what little energy is in this stadium right now. And it's amazing how quickly the energy has left the stadium for North Carolina A&T. Walls the man in motion. Here's Miller coming back to the near side, being chased and brought down from behind by number 92, Brandon Daniels. The walk-on, 26 years of age, Brandon Daniels. I mean, look at the motor. Brandon Daniels lines up as a defensive tackle. Once Miller crosses the line of scrimmage, he chases him down, down the line of scrimmage, showing that he's got some agility for a big man his size. It's not often you see defensive linemen with the ability to track down a quarterback from the backside with great effort by Brandon Daniels. But a first down for the Aggies, and they're knocking on the door once again. This time, the handoff goes to David Robinson, the junior out of Miami's College of the Sequoias High. And David Robinson picks up yards down inside the 30 to about the 29-yard line. Robinson's one of those showstopper running backs. I like every time he touches the ball, he kind of makes you go ooh and ah because you expect him to do something big because he's so quick and he's so shifty. Those guys are fun to watch. Gain of three by David Robinson. This time, 
They come back with Mike Ferguson. And Mike Ferguson first down inside the 15. Ferguson down to about the 13-yard line. So, you saw the snap to Robinson. Well, this is going to look like the old... Wing T here. You take a look at Robinson there. He gives a fake there, and actually he gives it off. He to, gives it off to Michael Ferguson. Didn't go to the quarterback. Quarterback was there as a distraction. Yeah, you can call it a distraction. <laughs> you call it what you want. Call it a successful running play. Just look back at what the Aggies did this year. They lost their season opener to Winston Salem right down the road. They gave up 357 yards, gained just 199 themselves. 41-14 was the final of that one. Then they went out to California where they played Prairie View. They lost that with 22 to 7. They had two punts blocked and returned for touchdowns. In fact, they had more yards than Prairie View, uh, but they were 3 of 12 on third down situations. And then they lost to Hampton in the game we did right here a couple weeks ago, 59 17. They gave up 438 yards. They only had 215, and they had hope. They were only trailing 17 to 7 at halftime, but the second half kickoff by the Aggies returned by Hampton University. And that kind of broke the game wide open and broke their back. And then of last week, they lost 27-22 uh, to North Carolina Central, holding them to just 199 yards. The fewest allowed in 26 fumble. games. And there's a fumble. And now the quarterback Nobody alertly, that's where Miller falls on it and saves the day. Let's go to the studio. Lowell Galindo with an update on what's going on. Lowell. Well, Charlie, Boise State, Southern Miss, and the Broncos get me nothing Broncos, Charlie. All right, Mike, it's Mike Gleason in the studio. Thank you for that update. Boise State uh, with their blue field. <laughs> I've played on that stuff before. It's just it's something to adjust your eyes to. And now we have movement. Let's see who's uh, guilty. You know, they have to cover that field at Boise State. When they're not playing on it, they have to cover it because there's a pond that sits right behind the stadium where mm -hmm. they shoot the cannon from all the time. Right. And geese nosedive into that turf. When they first opened it up, you'd have all these birds that would nosedive into the turf. So they actually cover that field when they're not playing on it. Here's our referee. False start. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Remains second down. Dow Davis is our referee. Right now, what's happening with the Aggies is what you talked about in the, you know, in the games. They've had the ability to move the ball from the 20 to the 20. But when time they've gotten into the red zone, they find a way to hurt themselves, whether it's a fumble, whether it's a false start, whether it's an interception in the end zone. It's those things there that they have to work on. So they can move the football. We see them doing that. But their red zone offense is pathetic. Yeah, it has been pretty bad. In fact, it hurt them when they were lost to North Carolina Central a week ago. As Miller going to the air. Now he's going to take off and run. Now he's going to throw. Touchdown! Touchdown, North Carolina AT. Chaz Dawson on the reception. Great, what a throw. Great body presence. The throw was secondary. The body presence to know that he was right on the line of scrimmage. He had committed to running. Take a look at where the original line of scrimmage is when you see this replay. You won't see it from here, but the line's right there. He's committed to run the ball, then he looks up at the last second and has the physical ability to get rid of that ball on a quick release and stay behind the line of scrimmage for the touchdown for the Aggies. And the Aggies, Eric Houston, for the point after that, are going to go for the two-point conversion, and they will not get there. It may have been a bad snap. And they make it a 13 to 10 ball game. But the Aggies go back in front on that drive that covered 71 yards. So they've had a 73 and a 71 yard drive. Let's look at the touchdown again, Jay. Yeah, I mean, if you take a look at the line of scrimmage, look at his vision. He's leaving the pocket. He's going to go. He's going to go. And he looks up really fast. And he sees a wide open Chaz Dawson in the end zone for six. Not a bad uh, afternoon for Mr. Herb Miller, who, who, who season a few weeks ago, everybody thought was uh, had come to an end because of a knee injury, and all of a sudden he's back playing. And he's one of those feel-good stories because as a freshman, he was in there just getting battered around. I mean, he was a starting quarterback last year when they didn't win any football games. And the coach said, hey, he's going to take his lumps, but he's also going to be our quarterback for the future. 
And then to see him get hurt early in the season, what everybody thought was going to be a season ending uh, injury and have the ability to come back and have some more success. I like to see him be the recipient of some of the good fortune because he paid his dues all last season. And that's only his second touchdown pass of the year. His first college touchdown pass occurred in the open season opener against Winston-Salem University. He paid his dues and he's going to continue to get better. That's why we talk about the nucleus is here. You know, you see we're talking about Herb Miller. Then we're talking about Michael Ferguson. Then we're talking about Terrence Whitaker and some of the other youngsters here. They're building this program one piece at a time, and it's coming together nicely, Charlie, although the record doesn't reflect that. Well, it looked like they were trying a little onside kick there, but for some reason or another, the uh, Spartans wind up uh, with the football. And, and then you wonder why. I mean, you know, it, it's the little things that they just can't overcome. You know, you score a touchdown, put the team down by four. You have to be able to execute the extra point. But they missed the snap there and the bobble on the snap. So now it's just a three-point game, and it's the little things. And they go for the onside kick, and the next thing you know, Norfolk State has the football in great field position again. Yeah, you talk about little things. A lot of a friend of mine always talks about the Nets and the elephants. <laughs> the Nets are <laughs> the ones that get you. You see the elephants as Daryl Jones dives forward. Well, special teams for the Aggies this year has uh, been an adventure, to say the least, in, in a lot of cases. They've had two punts blocked. They've had a field goal blocked. They've had a kickoff return for a touchdown, and they gave the Spartans great field position here. And we've only played four games this college football season. I mean, this happens in a whole season. And for most good teams, it doesn't even happen during the season. You know, you don't get two punts blocked, and you don't allow a team to run it back, but this has happened in just four games for the Aggies. Casey Hansen under pressure. He's sacked. Casey Hansen. And it was Hedgepeth. And he also had some help from Damian Hempfield, the linebacker out of Jamestown, North Carolina, number 40. Three. Yeah, look at the blitz just right up the middle there, and that was that actually Davian and Hemfield getting oh, there, Hemfield. delivering yep. the boom, and they brought the blitz. And you got to know, you got to get rid of the football. You got a guy coming right and running right into your grill, Casey Hansen. Get rid of the football. Don't get sacked when you see the blitz coming up the middle in your clear side of vision. Only the third sack this year of the Spartans of Norfolk State. They've only been sacked a couple times coming into this ball game. Last year, they were sacked 31 times. That's the end of the first quarter here at Aggie Stadium in Greensboro, where the Aggies are leading it 13 to 10 over the Spartans. Yeah. Don't go down the middle of the field. As we start the second quarter here from Aggie Stadium in Greensboro, Charlie Neal along with Jay Walker, 13 to 10 is our score. As you look at Mr. Hempfield getting the start in the middle tonight at linebacker for the Aggies. Third and 19 play dropped in and out of the hands of the receiver. He was there, had it, just didn't hold on. That was Jamar Johnson, and he doesn't drop many. No, he doesn't, but actually, you know, you talk about him being a former quarterback. That's one of those things where being a former quarterback, he kind of knew he shouldn't be getting that ball, and if he did get the football, he was going to get hit, and wow, what a good pop laid on him by Marcus Ruffin, the free safety, playing the deep third of the field. Brian Jackson back to punt it away for the first time tonight. Good hanging spiral. Touched, dropped, chase for the ball. It's still loose. Let's see who has it. It may be the Spartans. Those are the types of things that make coaches lose their hair. And what a poor effort by the return man to catch this punt. Never seen a punt return to try and catch the ball with his hands like he was playing shortstop instead of catching that body with two hands and embracing the ball close to your body. Look at look at this. This, this ball comes. He, he tries to catch the ball with his hands out front yeah. like he's playing second base and not playing punt return on football. Quick Cosby. Get underneath that football. And then once it gets down there, it's just a mad scramble with all those yellow jerseys coming in that direction. You had a feeling they were gonna come away with the football. So the Aggies go on defense once again. The Spartans get new life at the 17 of North Carolina A&T. Hanson now gives it off to Jones. Jones and a flag goes down in the vicinity of holding. 
And he picks up yards about three, but uh, this penalty will probably bring it back. And it does. Norfolk State right now is having trouble keeping the miscues off of their back. As we know about Norfolk State, they're the most penalized team in the MEAC conference. Yes, they are. They're oh, off to the record right now. You see why? They've been penalized 28 times in the last two ball games, and they came in averaging 114 yards in penalties a game. I thought you were going to tell me they've been penalized 28 times on the season. No. In the last, last two games. games. 14 penalties a game. Wow. First down, though, and 20 now for to to. the Spartans. Hanson from the gun. Pocket passer stands in there, has it complete, and picks up 12 of those yards back, or I should say eight of those yards back, as Walker was on the reception. Dario Walker, number 19, out of Ettick, Virginia. Unfortunate situation for him. His mom passed away just before they were going to go into training camp this year, and he's uh, played with a lot of emotion this year. Always tough when you're dealing with the loss of a loved one, and, you know, I can tell you all football players, as tough as we try to be, we're mama's boys, and if your mom is around, as long as, as you are to make it to college, you're definitely a mama's boy, and everybody is, we feel the pain of Daryl Walker. Third and 12. Second and 12, correction. Hanson throws a fade. Walker, touchdown! Spartan, so make that wicker. Jeremy Wicker with the reception. So Hanson gets his first touchdown pass of the year, and it goes to Jeremy Wicker. And that was a perfect throw. And one of the good things about having a quarterback that's a pocket passer that can hurt you from the pocket, when you've got first and 20, you can actually get that first down. So you saw them pick up eight yards on the previous play on first down, and then they hit with the home run ball with the perfectly thrown corner route by Casey Hanson to Jeremy Wicker. And for Wicker, his second catch of the afternoon, this one is blocked. <laughs> so the extra point is missed and now it's a 16 13 ball game the last two extra points have been an adventure by both teams uh, the Aggies tried a two-point conversion and it didn't work for them after a bad snap and now uh, they come up with a miss that time is Justin Castellan extra point is blocked yeah, here's a touchdown Jeremy Wicker lined up in the slot they had one guy occupy the free safety Jeremy Wicker's got one-on-one -on, -one on the corner route and he hit it and right here wow that's just a low trajectory kick by Justin Castle he's got to get that ball up that line October 1st, get a 2008 Touring 2V6 for only $3.99 a month. Are these numbers right? Yes. Do you know what this means? It means we have doubled in the last six months. So we're going to have to hire more people and move into a bigger space to get those key card things. But we'll need to order a lot more wood. But what if this continues? Dave, isn't that kind of the idea? Citibank Business Bank. Whatever your growing business needs, Citibank's there with guidance and customized solutions to help your business thrive. Come to City and let's get it done. Power tools have evolved. The new lithium Ryobi One Plus tools work at full power twice as long with a battery that fits all your other One Plus tools. Ryobi One Plus. Pro features, affordable prices. You'll find them only at the Home Depot. Own a timeshare? Turn it into cash. Timeshares only sold our timeshare fast and for the price we wanted. And they gave us a $1,000 shopping spree. Introducing the timeshares only $1,000 shopping spree bonus. Call now. Learn how to turn your timeshare into cash and get a $1,000 shopping spree. And we'll also send you this free information kit, including 10 secrets to timeshares. This offer is only good while supplies last, so don't delay. Call Timeshares Only, the most trusted name in timeshares. Call 800-383-3956.
13 29 left first half 29 points between the two teams already and you're looking at David Robinson who's back to receive this kickoff you'll feel it at the five Robinson up the gut still on his feet bounces to the outside still going and finally bounced down at the 34 yard line David Robinson on the return for the Aggies and that's where they will go to work. I told you those little scat back types, they're fun to watch, weren't they? I mean, uh, he can cut on a dime. He was running full speed. It made three cuts on a dime to make Spartan defenders miss. And numbers on Miller so far. So from their own 34 yard line, they will go to work. First down and 10. Mike Ferguson gets the call. Part of the reason why they've had some success running the football is the Norfolk State defensive line. They play a 3-5-3, three, three, really, what they like to do. And they like to slant those three defensive linemen. You know, they, they, they'll pick a direction. We're going to slant them to the right, or we're going to slant them to the left. And a t had success earlier in catching the defensive linemen in their crease, opening up the middle of the field. But it seems like Coach Aiken and staff have made some adjustments. And second down. Defense again. You see the gold jerseys of the Spartans surrounding the ball carrier. And of course, we talked about Mike Ferguson. You know, he's had only three career 100 yard games before this year coming in. Two so far this year. And you see Norfolk State rush yards allowed per game. 187.3 and they look like they they've stiffened a little bit in this contest. Yeah, it's been tough I mean, you know, they, they took on Rutgers it was the top 10 team yeah. in the nation and Ray Rice and you knew that Rutgers is gonna come and run the football Plenty, but you know this defense is getting better. And they're gonna continue to get better and with those Davis boys in the middle Look for them to compete in the Miak rushing type Miller under pressure on third down and five and it's incomplete Intended on the near side for Ortiz Trey Green the Fullback coming out of the backfield. And you, you were talking about them playing Rutgers this year. You take away that Rutgers game, the team has 799 total yards in the other two ball games this year. And those games were against Virginia State and Bethune Cookman. You know, those are the games that kind of count. You know, Bethune Cookman was a conference win, and that's one of the typically one of the upper echelon teams in the MEAC conference. So that's a measuring stick game that you can tell what type of football team you have when you play some of the good teams in your conference. And this is a much improved team. It would be an interesting story to follow this Spartan team as the season plays out. Wicker falls for it, makes the fair catch right at about the 27 yard line. And that's where the Spartans will go to work. First down and 10, leading it by a score of 16 13. We're in Greensboro, North Carolina for Thursday night primetime college football, Aggie Stadium, along with Jay Walker. I'm Charlie Neal, and glad you could join us in what has been a pretty good ball game so far. Both teams showing some offensive firepower. Yeah, both teams have the ability to move the ball up and down the field, but in the case of North Carolina AT, they moved the ball to the red zone and had some costly miscues that resulted in a lack of points on the board. First and 10 at their own 27. Hanson, who's done his first touchdown pass of the season, we're going to get a penalty flag motion against. The Spartans of Norfolk Prior State, the, the most penalized team in the conference. Offense, number 66. Five yard penalty remains first down. That's the left tackle, Andrew Raymer, junior out of Menifee, California. That was a young man who really wanted to go to UCLA because he's from California. West Coast boy, of course. West Coast, like you. <laughs> and, but he wasn't recruited. And, they, you know, that's where he wanted to go. <laughs> but you go where they offer you a job, right? And wherever the money goes <laughs> is where you go. Have money, we'll travel. Yeah. From the shotgun now. Hanson on first and 15. This was tipped in the air by one of the up linemen, and it goes incomplete. It'll be second and 15. You know, when you watch Casey Hanson, his, his body English, he's a quarterback. He really feels comfortable back there in the shotgun. You know, and I think the coaches have 
adjusted the offense around him. Often you'll see him throwing the ball on first down when he's underneath the center, and 90% of the time he's taking a three-step drop. Mm -hmm. Then when he gets in shotgun, he becomes a much more aggressive passer, and I think it's because he can see the blitz. He can see the defense a little bit better. See, look look at him now. As he breaks the huddle. You see he's looking at bodies and he's counting. And he's seeing everything. His body English just says, I'm more comfortable in the shotgun than I am underneath the center. center. Yeah. This is a delayed draw. Here's Darrell Jones. And Darrell takes it to the 29 and fumbles the ball. And the Aggies may have it. They do. So each team has turned the ball over. This time, Darrell Jones coughs it up right at about the 29 yard line. So great field position for the Aggies. Wow. Watch this collision between Darrell Jones and Marcus Ruffin, the free safety. Once Ruffin recognizes this on your left side, number 25, boom, he goes to tackle Jones low. Jones is up just a little bit too high. You know, Jones likes to lower the boom and put punishment on defensive backs. And perfect form tackling by Marcus Ruffin, the free safety for the Aggies. Well, they fumble the ball at their own 27-yard line. And that's where the Aggies will go to work at the Norfolk State 27. Ferguson on the carry. Laxity lost yards back to the 30. Lost a couple of them. And this is one of the times where if you're North Carolina A&T, take advantage of the turnover. You know, so often we say that we know when you turn the ball over, teams like to take a vertical shot. Well, if you're North Carolina A&T, you haven't been getting many bounces to go in your direction. Keep pressing your luck. Throw the ball towards the end zone. you got to try and help your defense stay on the field as long as they can. The next time they get on the field, have this game either tied or your team has the lead because you threw a touchdown. Again, keeping the ball on the ground, trying to bounce to the outside and down to the 25-yard line. And this time, they give the ball to McNair, who we saw him carry earlier in the ball game. So it'll bring up a third down. You know, this uh, Aggie team, you know, this is one of those games where if they win, they're right in position to be up near the top of the MEAC standings. Now we have David Robinson in there running it from the quarterback spot. Bounces to the outside, gets it inside, down inside the 10. First and goal for the Aggies. <laughs> David Robinson lined up at quarterback. There was no quarterback really in, in the lineup there for her. For the Aggies, we saw them do that earlier, and he handed off. This time, he kept it. Yeah, this play looked like it was doomed from the start. High snap, he couldn't give his fake there. But when you've got such an exciting, explosive scat back like David Robinson, you know the first defender can bring him one on one, bring him down one on one in that much space. And watch him just be a playmaker. Just, just be a playmaker and move forward, and run, young man, run. Now, timeout been charged to the Aggies, I believe. No, that's to Norfolk State. Norfolk State, that's their second time out. They have one remaining. When you're talking about the standings, and when you look at the, the MEAC standings right now, you know, even though we talked about the Aggies 0-20 or 0-1 as far as conference play, so a win, they're 1-1 in the conference, so they still, their season is not lost. You know, right back in the driver's seat, but the unfortunate thing, if you look at their remaining schedule, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, that, that murder is real with the MEAC conference. As you look, there it is. Hampton on top, 3-0. They're perfect. And, of course, followed by the Spartans of Norfolk State. They're trying to go 2-0 for the first time since they joined the MEAC in 1997. Delaware State's 1-0. They will have a big game against Hampton coming up on Saturday. So that may or will determine, you know, whether Hampton stays at the top of the conference or whether they lose their first game of the year. 10-0-3 remaining. Aggies in great field position with a first and goal at the eight. Miller under pressure, and he is going to be dropped. And it's Marsh on the stop defensively who came in. That's the tackle wearing number one. He wore number 99 a year ago, Dennis did. Preseason first team all conference player. Wow, how do you allow your quarterback to get hit on a three-step drop by the biggest member of the defensive line for Norfolk State? He goes 6'5", 300 pounds, and he's a nose tackle, D-tackle, so it's not like he lined up at end and did a stunt. He came right up the middle. Started his college career at Maryland. He's from Greensboro here. This time on the ground again here is Ferguson deck to the five-yard line. And down to about the four. Where it'll be third... 
and goal. And this is one of those times where you want to see if North Carolina A&T has learned from the growing pain. It's third and four. You at least have to have a field goal attempt out of this. You can't afford to turn the ball over, but have you grown up enough as an offensive unit to learn how to punch the ball in? Herbert Miller running the offense from the quarterback spot. Out of Winston-Salem's car behind. And now a timeout being called. They call their first timeout. So they have two remaining. 8.45 is the time remaining. And you talk about uh, this Aggie team. They'll be at Morgan State on the road for their game next week. So they'll have a little time off. And then they come home to face the Hornets of Delaware State. Of course, Delaware State's playing Hampton on Saturday. You know, the tough, the good thing is they got Hampton out the way. You know, they played Hampton. They took that loss. Trust me, they won't be the only team in conference play to take a loss at the hands of Hampton University. But this is really the murderer's row of, of the MEAC schedule. I mean, you got to take on Morgan State. I really think Morgan State's a great team. I think Delaware State has a has a bid to say they're the best team in black college football. Howard University is going to be tough. It's going to be Howard homecoming. So you're talking about not a, a 12th man. You're talking about a 12th, 13th, 14th, and 15th man for Howard homecoming. But Thune Cookman, speed, 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 and Florida A&M on a surprising team. So they need to focus now. And if they can get a win today, it make their job a lot easier on trying to end that win streak, that losing streak. Quarterback wants to keep it. Still on his feet. He's into the end zone. Touchdown. Miller from four yards out. Wow, what a great individual effort by Herbert Miller. When the Spartan defense had this play scouted out, they knew it was coming, but he was just too good an athlete. And I don't like those dance moves, but I like the way he was moving with the football in his hands on that touchdown run. First rushing touchdown for Herbert Miller this season. He takes it in from four yards out. His team goes back up by three points, trying to make it a four-point ball game. The point after, which has been an adventure for the last two kicks for both teams. This one splits the uprights. And now it's a 20 to 16 lead for the Aggies of North Carolina A&T. They haven't led many times this season, but they came with a vengeance tonight. And we will be back. Eight thirty nine is the time remaining here in the second quarter twenty to sixteen is our score here six play twenty eight yard drive so each team has managed to get a touchdown from the other team's mistakes and I like the fact that they took advantage of the turnover so often young teams don't know how to take advantage of turnovers in great field position the Aggies did a great job on that last drive Howard on the return for the Spartans uh, to the thirty five yard line and let's look at Melissa Miller his first rushing touchdown of the year he's a happy man I mean yeah let's take a look at the move what's he doing riding the horse there where are you from son you <laughs> from Texas I don't know what's that called look like the old funky chicken doesn't it Charlie you would know <laughs> I'm not that old yet. Okay. <laughs> if that's what you have to tell yourself every day when you wake up keep on doing it. that's right and you're talking about playing Howard for these uh, Aggies or A&T they're not playing badly this year I mean they they've got to win a game but the you know you look at some of the personnel their quarterback Brian Johnson and they have a pretty good receiver Jerron Williams and on the defensive side into a Cooper I mean these guys are playing pretty good defensively Howard will always get at you it's just a matter of you know where the rest of the elements and it looks like they've got a pretty exciting offense they've gone to a the spread offense which all the football championship series teams are using now Michael Pace almost picked this one off intended for Dario Walker yeah that's late that's a late throw there I mean you've got one on one coverage there so first things first you don't want to throw a hitch route against man to man coverage and second if you throw a hitch route against man to man coverage that defensive back should pick that pass off. So Casey Hansen's got to get his head right. Now just a poor read throwing the football. Michael Pace in that corner spot. He's at the bottom of your screen right now. Hansen back to pass under pressure. Steps away, still on his feet, and then lets it go incomplete. Well, he avoided the sack. Showed a little bit of agility back there in the pocket. You know, that's one of the things we talked about. When you've got a, a quarterback that's necessarily not that comfortable under center, they're going to look at that defensive line because they don't want to get hit. And he was looking for a place to run there early on the breakdown and protection. Third down. Now 
and has been playing very vanilla coverages. The outside pass has been wide open, so look for Hanson here to attack the outside with a soft coverage and one-on-one -on -one outside free throwing lane. One of three, the Spartans tonight in third down conversions. Play clock down to one second. He doesn't get it off. It shouldn't be a penalty. Well, the penalty is going to be for, not for the delay of game, the penalty is going to be for a false start. Before I the snap, false start. Offense, number 66, five-yard penalty. Remains third down. That's the second time Raymer's been called for a false start. And that one there is not his fault. That's Andrew Raymer being a football player. You've got the play clock down there at one second. So he realizes, hey, that ball's going to get snapped. And it doesn't matter. Either we're going to get a delay game for five, uh, for a five-yard penalty, or they're going to call me for being offsides. But worst-case scenario, or best-case scenario, I'm ready to block. So yeah, or, or they snapped it right on time, and, and, and there was time. no penalty, right? And there are many offensive linemen that do that. You'd be surprised the number of offensive linemen and look at that play clock. Third down now and 15. Hanson standing in there, throwing it long, wide open. This is going to be a touchdown for Jeremy Wicker, his second of the day. 70 yards. Beautiful throw by Casey Hansen. Defensive coordinator's worst nightmare is to call a blitz and not have the ability to get to the quarterback. When, the, when you knew that they had the max protection in there, when Casey Hansen didn't get rid of the football right away, and he did a great job of hanging that ball in the air, putting plenty of air underneath it to allow Wicker to run underneath it. Longest pass before that this year was 45 yards. Here's the extra point. And this one is good. And the Spartans regain the lead on the touchdown pass, 23 to 20. Let's look at it. Hanson going up top, 70 yards. Jeremy Wicker runs it down. Defense can't catch him. That's Crowley. And seven more points on the board for the Spartans. Jeremy Wicker has just given his team, the Spartans of Norfolk State, a 23-20 lead on the 70-yard pass. It was a three-play, 64-yard drive. The reason it was 70 yards is because they lost some yards on a penalty. But Wicker, Richard, a year ago, only four catches coming into today's game, and he has three catches today, two of them for touchdowns, as David Robinson brings it back up the field for the Spartans. He may go all the way. Needs a block down the sideline. And he's still on his feet, finally tackled inside the 15 at the 14. David Robinson, Mr. Excitement. David Robinson came in averaging 19.4 yards per kickoff return. He just upped his average there. That average just went way <laughs> up, Charlie. I mean, up big time. And put a good job of setting up his blockers and getting the wedge. You see him here. He knows he's got a wall to the right. Run straight ahead. He come hard right. And this is just mano a mano. Who's got more speed in the Jets? Twisting number nine around. Terrell Whitehead around like a top. David Robinson getting it done as a quarterback, as a running back, and as a return guy for the Aggies of North Carolina A&T. 81 yards on that return. And there's a pass. And we're going to have incomplete. They're looking for a flag over there, but the, none of the officials are having it. They were trying to get it to Walls in the corner of the end zone, covered defensively. Down there by Dustin Johnson, the junior out of Phoebus High in Hampton. Let's look at the end of this. Well, yeah, you can tell he got around the defensive back, Dustin Johnson. It was a good throw. Unfortunately for the Aggies, Wall's foot got tangled with the defensive back, causing him to fall down. Incidental contact from the shotgun this time is Ferguson on the carry. Ferguson brought down from behind by Terrell Whitehead, the free safety. Free season second team all conference, number nine. Out of Virginia Beach, Virginia. You know, he's one of those active free safeties. We like to call him ball hawks. You know, he's got great size, 6'2", 200 pounds. And he's got two interceptions already on the season, first in the MIAC conference. And he's one of those guys for the Spartans. When you see the football, nine times out of ten, Terrell Whitehead's going to be around it. You like how I use that phrase, oh, yeah. nine yeah. times out of ten. He's number nine, nine times out of ten. And an interception against Bethune-Cookman. In fact, returned one for a touchdown. Penalty called it back. This will bring up a third and seven now for 
time. The Aggies. Quick throw, toss into the end zone. It's going to go incomplete. This time again, they're trying to get it to Dawson, who's had a touchdown reception already. Chaz Dawson. I mean, look at them try to spread you out by formation. A&T went with five wide receivers trying to find a one-on-one -on -one matchup. You've got Chaz Dawson going against their safety, Anthony Olumba, one-on-one, -on -one, put the ball with a little air on it, and just came a little bit short from the touchdown grab. So Eric Houston, first time that the Aggies had kicked field goals last week. This one's blocked, and this one will go into the end zone. So that was a 24-yard field goal that wow. is blocked. So they do not have a chance to tie the score. Uh, see, and, that, and that's that strain that you put in your body. English just gets everybody around. I mean, take a look at this field goal. High snap right away. Then not much pressure on the edge. And that ball just had a little elevation, but a great individual effort of getting up the middle to get a paw on that for the block. Whitehead going by there. That's one of the big DNs. But you know, that's one of those things where you had such great field position on a great kickoff return. No question. 81 yards. And what do you have to show for it? All right. Nothing. Nada. Nathan. I Zilch. think the way this game is going, the last team has the ball may win this one. <laughs> Here's Hanson again going upstairs. And this one is a little bit too bad. Oh, we got to get penalty markers on the far side. That one's intended for Dario Walker. And it was Andre Twine who was defending downfield, and he's going to be called for pass interference. Yeah, Twine fell for the double move, and it was a good job by Hanson of putting some air underneath the football so the official could see the contact that took place on that side. They're calling holding rather than pass interference. Holding, defense, number 26, 10-yard penalty, Michael automatic Pace. first down. Number 26, Michael Pace. Twine plays for Norfolk. He's a Spartan. Yeah. Look at these special teams woes, and the numbers are growing. They're climbing. Had a, another field goal block tonight. They've got to shore it up. You know, if you want to be a good football team, you got to play well on offense, defense, and the all-important special team. Third down, and now we get offside. You said something earlier about Casey Hansen working from the shotgun, Casey Hansen working from under center. As a quarterback, when you played, did you have a preference? Yeah, I always like. I mean, it's easier to see more people on. You can see blitzes coming when teams are going to blitz you. Ball starts. Offense, number 64. Five-yard penalty. Remains first down. The other tackle this time, not Raymer, but Carlton Ford. Carlton Ford, a Chesapeake, Virginia freshman out of Indian River High. Guilty. First and uh, 16 now. You, you know, to finish that thought, as a young quarterback, I like being in shotgun because I can see everybody coming. But the better I became and the more comfortable I became, I like getting underneath the center for the threat of the running game at all times. This time, Daryl Jones off to the right side on the first and 15 play. Gains yards up to about the 28-yard line. But the, the good thing about this, this offense is you have to feel comfortable if you're Coach Adrian, and more importantly, offensive coordinator, Mastrimati is, you know, you've got a quarterback that every time they've got penalties on first down, they've always gotten the first down. Mm -hmm. And that's the one thing that you can do in this conference that other teams can't because you've got the best passer in the league. Well, he's been a good passer so far tonight. Hanson throws in the middle, has it complete this time. It's Walker again, and Walker very close to the first down mark at the 41. I think he has it. You know, and this is fun to watch. I mean, this is an efficient pass attack that they've got. You know, in this conference, in the MIAC conference, which is heavily loaded with great running teams with spread offense, when you've got a drop back passer at your disposal that you can use, like Casey Hansen, hey, you, you don't mind if you get third and six or seven because the way the passing game is set up, you can attack all positions on the field. First down and ten, Spartans. Jones into the secondary. Daryl Jones at midfield, a gain of nine. See, now that's cheating. <laughs> You've got a six foot five quarterback that's back there throwing darts, hitting wide receivers in open space, and then you hit him 
But you always hear coaches talking about balanced attack. And that's it. And, that, and that's it. And this balanced attack is cheating because you got a 5'10 bowling ball that goes by the name of Daryl Jones pummeling folks. And, you know, the offensive coordinators love this down distance right now. Second and one is the home run hidden down. And now the Aggies use their second timeout with 5.23 to go. And you look at Daryl Jones and what he's done so far tonight. You know, he's the fourth all-time leading scorer in the history of the Spartans of Norfolk State with uh, 180 points coming into the game. He has 186 now with the touchdown tonight. Don't forget college football continues Saturday right here on ESPNU with two more games, both of them coming from the ACC. It kicks off at, nine, at noon Eastern with Temple taking on Army, then at 3.30 Eastern, Louisville squaring off against North Carolina State. It's Saturday afternoon college football presented by Allstate on ESPNU. For more, log on to ESPNU.com, your home for the finest in college sports. You know, talked about those touchdowns being scored at Norfolk State. You know, anytime I think about Norfolk State football, I, I think of James Rowe. I mean, James Rowe and Aaron Sparrow lit up the CIAA. And it would have been interesting to see had they been able to play in the MEAC how Norfolk State starting the conference play would have been. But Aaron Sparrow, Aaron, Aaron Sparrow, and James Rowe. Here's another touchdown. Wicker! And he has it inside the 10. Boy, I said touchdown. I was premature. Yeah, I premature. Yeah. <laughs> well, at least he caught it. <laughs> with, with, a better, with, with, a, with a little bit better throw out in front, it would have been a touchdown. But what great recognition by Casey Hansen realizing the free safety left the post. Let's go up top. Hard play action pass. I told you before they took the timeout, second and one is an offensive coordinator's dream. You go for the home run, and he did a good job of poise, set up, deliver the ball downfield accurately, and Wicker does a great job of adjusting coming back for the catch. Well, he was inside the 10 first and goal right now at the seven yard line for the Spartans and we have another penalty marker down did someone move prematurely again for the Spartans Offense, number 40 five yard penalty remains first down this is a tight end this time Sharon Childress junior out of Lynchburg Virginia who moved from the tight uh, from linebacker to the tight end spot six penalty for 33 yards. Pete Adrian not happy with that. You never want to lead the league in, in penalties. But they're leading on the scoreboard with 446 to go. It's first and goal. The ball spotted at the 13-yard line. Daryl Jones on the carry. Not much running room for him as he tries to go off the right side there. And one of the linebackers there to make the stop defensively for the Aggies of North Carolina AT. Andre Thornton. One of the things that the Spartan Club has got to work on, if they want to remain one of the better teams in the MEAC conference, they got to cut down on those penalties. Mm -hmm. I mean, good teams in conference play, they don't lead the league in penalties called per game. So you're looking for room for improvement, start right there. Cut down on the penalties and watch good things happen. Hanson with plenty of time. Throws it to Daryl Jones out of the backfield, and Daryl Jones takes it back down to about the seven yard line before Deshaun Graham made the stop defensively. There he is, number four, the freshman out of Greensboro's Page High. Charlie Neal along with Jay Walker here in Greensboro at Aggie Stadium for this MIAC matchup on Thursday night primetime college football here on the U. I'm glad you could join us. 3.33, the time remaining. We're in the first half of play. Spartans leading at 23-20, threatening to increase on that lead. Daryl Jones straight ahead, and he's going to be stopped shy of the goal line, which will bring up a field goal situation for the Spartans. So... He stopped at about the four-yard line. It'll be about a 21-yard field goal forthcoming for Justin Castellet. And in this game thus far, special teams and field goal opportunities or PAT attempts, they've been a roller coaster ride. Well, let's see what happens to Mr. Castellet. He's already hit a 20-yard field goal in the game. 
This one is up. It's got the distance. It splits the uprights. And now the Spartans go out by 6, 26-20. Mike Gleason is back in the studio. Let's go back to him and see what's happening at halftime. Mike. Well, Charlie, coming up on the Sports Center U halftime report, Boise State, Southern Miss, battle on the blue field. We'll have the highlights, of course. Which league is better, SEC or Pac-10? Derwin Gray, Steve Israel will settle that, plus the HBCU notebook with Donald Hunt. Big, big game coming up this weekend in the SWAC. That's all coming up at halftime, Charlie. Yeah, thank you very much. And talking about that big game in the SWAC this weekend, that's the one between Southern University and Alabama State, both leading their respective uh, divisions and both going in 4-0. Yeah, going down to Mobile, Alabama. Yeah, Gulf Coast Classic. You know, for Jackson State, as much fuss as those fans were making, they're still undefeated in conference play. And when you talk about Southern University, what a great job by Pete Richardson. I mean, you know. Who uh, started his college career right down the road here at Winston-Salem as an assistant coach to Bill Hayes. Bill Hayes leaves Winston-Salem, comes over here to North Carolina A&T. Pete Richardson takes over at Winston, does a great job, and finally goes down to Southern. He's been there, what, 15, 16 years now. Doing a great job down there as well. And with the Jaguars off to a 4-0 start, it looks like the two Louisiana schools are back in business in terms of Grambling and Southern in the SWAC Western Division. Short kick. This goes out of bounds. And it'll be first in town, first and 10 for the Aggies of A&T at the 37-yard line. Or well, it was fair court, actually, by the... Aggies of North Carolina A&T. That was Andre Thornton, a linebacker. But again, they kept it out of the hands of David Robinson. That was the most important thing. They, they did. Right now is a time where you have to know game management if you're Herb Miller, the quarterback for A&T. You got two minutes and 46 seconds before halftime. You're down by six, but you can't afford to turn the football over. If you don't score here, it's not the worst thing in the world. But if you turn the ball over and you go in down by at least two scores at halftime, then that could be disastrous no question about it and now Miller trying to take off and run in trouble and he is going to be sacked and falls and Can't fumbles the ball and the Spartans have it the Spartans have it Sharon Williams one of the twins comes up with it now that's the things that make 20 game losing streaks turned to 21. <laughs> Turn 21. And trying to do too much. Hey, look, look, it's not here. Okay, get rid of it. Protect the football. Put two hands on the football. He put one hand on there. Big defensive end. Got that paw on the ball. That was Ray Jennings getting the ball on the swat down. And, you know, recognize right now. Get rid of the football. Just make it second and 10. You can't do too much. You've got to manage the game at the quarterback position. That turnover is going to lead to points. If it does, then all of a sudden, instead of it being a one-possession lead, it's a two-possession lead. Talked about that before the snap of the ball. The last, uh, yeah, I mean, he, I hate to say I had a crystal ball. <laughs> you know, I hate to say I told you so, but I told you, you got to protect the football. All you young quarterbacks out there, realize where you are in the football game and when to say when. At the a &T 26, 2.35 to go, first half. High formation now. Casey Hansen, long call. Here's Daryl Jones into the gut. Blue jerseys are there to make the stop defensively. A gain of four yards, make it three on the play, down to about the 23-yard line. Here's Daryl Jones. Now this is one of those times where, you know, your, your head coach's personality is going to come out. You know, when, when they got the ball back, there's no doubt that Pete Adrian's saying, hey, I got a chance to make sure my defense does not get back on the field before the halftime. You're about to see a heavy dose of Daryl Jones one, two, three times in a row. We kick field goal. We're going to go in with a two-score lead. You're not getting the ball back. And here's Daryl Jones again. Cuts it back. Stumbles forward first down at the 15. The tendency of the coach is so are so they, they you know they tickle me from time to time because if you've got a very aggressive coordinator and a head coach that likes to throw the ball around then you know hey they're coming out passing as soon as they get that turnover but i guarantee you coach adrian told his offensive coordinator we're going to run this ball we're going to run this ball we're going to run this ball and, and it's paying off and i don't blame him for running the ball when you got the bowling ball in the backfield yeah that bowling ball's name is Daryl johnson 17 <laughs> carries 74 yards for him this afternoon so far here's hansen Handing off to Daryl Jones again, going around the right side. And as you said, Jay, 
Pound it inside. Keep it on the ground. Don't make any mistakes. Try to get some points before you go into the locker room at halftime. Worst case scenario, you go into halftime with a nine-point lead. Best case scenario, Jones breaks a big one, and you got a 13-point lead going into the half. What I like there about Jones, that last run, is something he couldn't do a year ago, and that was run the stretch play to the outside, and once you realize you couldn't get outside, have the quickness and the body control to cut up in there to gain some positive yardage. And to bring up a second down and seven under a minute to go in the half. One timeout remaining for the Spartans of Norfolk State. Hanson rolling to his left, being chased from behind, and he is brought down. What a play by the secondaries, Ruffin. Marcus Ruffin, number 25, the junior out of E.E. E. Smith High in Fayetteville, North Carolina. Yeah, this is one here where you can't get the sack. He should have got rid of that football there. And once it wasn't there, you know, I don't care what kind of athlete you are, Casey Hanson. I'm always going to bet on the defense and the free safety hawking down the quarterback from behind. And he should have got rid of that football. And that was a second down play. Now the clock is ticking down to 12 seconds. Now they're going to call their final timeout. With 12 seconds to go, do you think they're just going to bring the field goal kicker on? Or maybe take yeah. one more shot at the end zone? Yeah, I mean, that's weird you call timeout in that situation. It seems like you want to hurry up, run a play, and save that time timeout for saving it. But maybe I think Coach Adrian saw the sack. He wants to talk about down and distance and what he's trying to accomplish with his quarterback after seeing him take the sack. Now for up-to-the-minute news on everything that is college sports, log on to ESPNU.com. It's an online service, and it's the gateway to the best in college sports content from ESPN that combines the latest news, scores, features, video highlights, podcasts, and much more. And if you don't have ESPNU, make sure you log on to the ESPNU.com on your computer and type in your zip code at the top of the page or call your local cable operator or satellite provider. Log on to ESPNU.com today because we are college sports. Along with Jay Walker, Charlie Neal, they're going to go for the field goal. This will be a 30 Eight yard field goal attempt for Castellan. He can hit it from here. 12 seconds to go in the half. It's a third down play. He has the distance and it splits the uprights and it is good. So Castellan with seven seconds to go in the half makes it 29 20. So Castellan has hit back to back field goals for the Spartans 21 yards. And another one for 38. Coach Adrian told us he felt very comfortable and confident with his kicking unit going into this game. He thought they had a clear advantage over North Carolina A&T, and he's got tremendous faith in Justin Castellan. You know, what a, you know, you just hate to go over it again, but two bad decision makings by the quarterbacks in those last two series. If North Carolina A&T didn't protect the football, and that resulted in points on the board. Now for Norfolk State, if you're Casey Hanson, you can't afford to get sacked in that position. I mean, you never want to get sacked on the football field. But anytime your team is going in and you're trying to win the battlefield position, you're better off throwing the ball away rather than getting sacked. Had he not gotten sacked, Coach Adrian would have called another play and possibly a pass play to keep the drive alive instead of settling for that field goal. So three field goals by Castellet today, 20. 21 and 38 yards and his team leading at 29 20 short kick again and a fair catch being called for by Andre Thornton once again the linebacker and with six seconds to go in the half the Aggies get the ball and they'll probably kneel down and just run out the clock. Wow that's a defensive coach there. <laughs> you got six seconds left. You know my thing about doing the pooch kick here if you've got a quarterback with a strong enough arm you can make the Hail Mary throw down into the end zone you know but Coach Adrian is set. He said, David Robinson is not going to touch that football again <laughs> on, <laughs> on special teams if I can help it, and definitely not on a kickoff return. Well, you would think that they may kneel down, but uh, the formation doesn't say that. But the uh, quarterback decides he's just going to keep it. He may break out, out of there and develop something and the clock is down to zero with Miller on a keeper. It's halftime here in Greensboro. 29-20. Spartans leading it. Let's head back to the studio. Mike Gleason for Sports Center U halftime report. 
All right, Charlie, former Notre Dame's where you can still tune in and listen to the bands do their thing at halftime. There's the score, 29-20, as we sit back now and uh, take a look at the Norfolk State Spartan Ma Marching Legion. It's halftime in Greensboro, and you are watching the Blue and Gold Marching Machine from North Carolina A&T. Welcome back to the Sports Center U Halftime Report. It's time for the HBCU Notebook and our weekly chat with Donald Hunt from the Philadelphia Tribune and a regular contributor to ESPN.com. Donald, uh, here we are just one month into the season. Great story surfaces at Alabama State. Besides being 4-0, of course, but Jay Peck has come out of nowhere to find stardom. Absolutely, Mike. I mean, Jay's having an outstanding year. As a matter of fact, uh He's really stepped up in the last few weeks. He's had three games where he's going over 100 yards and has been a real steady player for uh, Reggie Barlow. Now, Donald, patience sometimes is the toughest thing to endure. There's been a long list of running backs who had to wait in the shadows of someone else. Absolutely, and uh, Jay Peck had to uh, wait his turn at Alabama State, but uh, he's really come on as of last year, about the third game into the season. He really stepped up and played some great football for uh, Reggie Barlow's team, and uh, Reggie's doing a great job with him. Uh, he's going to get him uh, out in space this week. Uh, he's going to have him run the ball, but he's also going to have him come out of the backfield and catch some passes because he's been that effective for him. Correct me if I'm I think he's from Columbus, Ohio, right? He probably envisions himself as Archie Griffin out there running. Absolutely. He's from Columbus, Ohio, which is, uh, you know, right in the same town as Ohio State, and uh, he was a great player out there, and uh, you know, made his way down to Alabama State. He was recommended uh, by um, one of the staff members in the uh, community relations office at Alabama State and who's an uh, alumnus. And uh, he came down to Alabama State and, and walked on and has just done a fantastic job. Now, Southern's also 4 and 0. If they put 8 in the box, that puts the spotlight on Chris Mitchell, I would guess. Absolutely. I mean, uh, Chris Mitchell is uh, going to be a key player for uh, Alabama State, and uh, we're going to see how he does against that uh, Southern Jaguars defense, and uh, that defense is really good with Jonathan Malvo and also uh, Vincent Sams, those two outstanding linebackers for Pete Richardson's team. Does he stay away from Jamal George, who has three picks, eight in the last two years? He's got to be aware of him. Jamal George is a really solid player, maybe one of the best secondary guys at Southern since Aeneas Williams. This has gone back a ways, but uh, he's been uh, terrific. And uh, Jamal George is, uh, you know, one of the better defensive uh, players in the conference. Southern's quarterback Bryant Lee now second in total offense. He's coming off a big passing game Saturday. Does his numbers give Southern an edge, or will defense dictate in this game? Well, his numbers are going to give him an edge. I mean, he's got nine touchdowns, and I think the big thing here, uh, Mike, is the fact that he has no interceptions. No interceptions at this point in the season is pretty good. So nine touchdowns, no interceptions. And the other thing I'll throw in, Mike, is the fact that he's completing 65% of his passes. Donald, thanks so much for your time. Okay, thank you, Mike. Nine points separating Norfolk State and North Carolina A&T. A 20-game skid on the line. Can they come back? Second half is coming up. 29-20 halftime score here as we get ready to start the third quarter in Greensboro, North Carolina. Let's check out some first half statistics from this contest. This MEAC matchup. College football primetime presented by Buffalo Wild Wings. 
And we see the rushing yards. The Aggies have an edge there. But in the passing department, Casey Hansen has done the job. 194 yards and a pair of touchdowns. Yeah, for both offenses, that's plenty of offense for just one half of football. Can they continue? But most important number you see there, obviously, the four turnovers by North Carolina A&T let you know that they haven't done it right. And I don't know if they turned the ball over four times. It's only two times. They had a muff punt, and then they fumbled the ball. But they both led to scores. Yeah, so, I mean, that's something they've got to work on. And, you know, if they can work with, if they can narrow that down, this football game could be tied. Don't forget they gave the Spartans three points going into the half as that's well. That's right. Spartans had lost six straight games on the road. The last time they won a road game was back in November of 05 when they beat Morgan State in Baltimore, and they're trying to win one here, and they've got a flag going down on the return, and this is going to be in the neighborhood of illegal block in the back. Here's our referee. Holding number 26 of the return team, Kenny Armfield from the spot of the foul. First down. Dow Davis letting us know. Seventh penalty for the Spartans team again that came in, and that's for 43 yards as the most penalized team in the conference. That's 35 penalties in the last three ball games, and there's Casey Hansen's first half statistics 10 of 16, 194. First touchdown passes of the year for Mr. Hansen. Casey's done a good job with the deep ball tonight. Normally he's a three-step passer. Tonight he's hitting them hard with the long ball. And as the guys in the studio said at halftime, here's the rhino. <laughs> he's going straight ahead up to the 28-yard line. And we're talking about Daryl Jones, and he's a little slow getting up here. And let's look at Casey Hansen. Yeah, perfect pass here, touch pattern on the corner route with the pitch corner route combination and then middle of the field wide open. What do you do when you got protection? Let it fly for the touchdown reception to Jeremy Wicker. And Wicker had a great first half as well, catching both touchdown passes right. that Hanson threw. Four, to four receptions, 135, and a pair of touches for Jeremy Wicker. Kid who was redshirted a year ago. He's out of Quantico, Virginia, redshirt freshman. And he went to Stafford High down there. And now Norfolk State spends a timeout. Must have been something that uh, Casey Hansen didn't like what he saw because it's uh, only 45 seconds gone in the third quarter. And you've already spent a timeout. Well, I guess, you know, they've got seven penalties already. He didn't want to get the eight with a delay of game penalty. And, you know, Coach Adrian, you know, when you got the lead, you don't think it'll come back to hurt you. But rather have him talk it out than turn the football over when you're down and your opponent's side of the field. Now, we talked early in the first half about what's coming up as far as the Aggies are uh, concerned in terms of scheduling. When you look at the Spartans of Norfolk State, you know, they, they don't get any easier for them. So this is a game that, you know, they, they feel is maybe one that gets them over the hump because they go to South Carolina State uh, or they play South Carolina State at home next, and then they have to play Hampton University. So the schedule doesn't get any easier. That's a tough stretch there, and that's why you want to be playing your best football once conference play begins. And Coach Adrian feels that his team right now is playing their best football. Second and six. Hanson, little swing pass to Daryl Jones out of the backfield. Tripped up before he could turn the corner. And coming up to make the stop is Shahid. Ashan Shahid. And there's Norfolk State. As I said, they'll be home for two games against uh, the Bulldogs of South Carolina State and the Pirates of Hampton. Then they travel to Tallahassee. They take on the uh, Rattlers of Florida a &M. They come home for homecoming, and we'll have that game down in uh, Norfolk against Howard University, and they close out the season in Baltimore at Morgan State. The last time they won a game on the road was against the Bears of Morgan State back in, in 2005. It is third down and seven. They lost the yard on that actual play. Now we get movement in the line, offensive line, false start again. So we've had about four Black first. Out, false start. Offense, number 64. Five-yard penalty, still third down. So Carlton Ford and Andrew Raymer both have received two penalties on false starts in that offensive line, the left tackle and the right tackle, respectively. And I always like to give a little bit of credit to the defensive line. If, if they really weren't worried about their blocking assignments and trying to get out of there so early, they wouldn't jump. So let's give credit to the front four for North Carolina A&T of getting some pressure. Hanson standing in there, throws in the middle, and he has a complete. Let's see where they mark his forward progress. If it's at the 35, there's a first down for Dario Walker. And that's what they have. They move the chains. And that's one thing you always want to do, play 
In front of the chains, not behind them. I mean, you know, soft coverage, and all they're doing is running a curl route. I mean, on time, 1,000, 1,002, let it go, stop, turn around, curl. At what point is Shahid going to realize that you've got to know where the first down marker is, get a hand on that wide receiver, don't let him run downfield 10 yards before you try and make contact with him? 50% in third down conversions tonight for the Spartans of Norfolk State. They seem to keep digging themselves in the hole as far as those third long situations, don't they? Yeah, and fortunately for them, they've had Casey Hansen help them overcome it. You know, throwing the ball deep, and he's got the, the strong enough arm, and he's a good enough passer in their scheme where they've overcome it. But, you know, we're not talking about having the ability to do the simple things. If your coach, the coach of the North Carolina State at Norfolk State, want to take this team to the next level, and the mistakes they're making tonight when they're playing against a better team will bury them. Daryl Jones out of the lineup. In the backfield, Tommy Moore, a 5'11", 250 freshman, number 44. Here comes the blitz. Pass out in the flat, complete. But not much running room after the pass is complete. We're going to get a flag. The penalty marker down as the stop was made by Brandon Colbert. The completion to the tight end, Dexter Bailey, the senior, out of Suffolk, Virginia. And that's illegal use of hands on Norfolk State. And again, the penalties just keep on coming. <laughs> you know, they do. And once again, Casey Hansen's right arm is going to get a test in terms of having to throw for this first down. Now they're waiting for the decision from the Aggies to see what they're going to do. They've got to move it back. It's going to be about a second down and uh, we'll Number call it 13. Hand, Number 66 of the offense, 10-yard penalty. 10-yard penalty. So it's a 10-yard penalty. Moves it all the way back to the 28-yard line, 27-yard line. So it'll have to get up to the 45 for first down. Uh, you can't come out and play cover four, real soft coverage on the outside again and allow Norfolk State to pick up eight yards this pass pattern and then ten on the next. Blitz, here's a screen. Daryl Jones drops the ball. Wow, that was open. Yeah, it was. He had plenty of yellow jerseys in front of him to act as a convoy to get the first down had he been able to hold on to that football there. And that's one where as a quarterback, you got to take responsibility. Anytime a defensive lineman touches your football on a screen pass, that's your responsibility to know where they are. Third and 18 now. They are three of six and third down conversions. In the third quarter, 29-20. Aggie scored first, taking the opening drive right down the field, and has been back and forth since then. No scoring here in the second half. Hanson with plenty of time. Wide open. First down. And at midfield, just close to it. On the reception this time is Dickerson. To Daryl Dickerson. Daryl Dickerson, only his second reception of the year. And he had a big pick up there. And this is a privilege of having a senior quarter, quarterback that knows and has the poise to stay in the pocket. High-low combination over the middle of the field. You've got one guy running a post, and Dickerson coming underneath, running the 15-yard dig pattern. Hanson hits him right between the one and the six for the big first down conversion. Second reception for Dickerson for tonight. And here's Dow Jones bouncing to the outside, trying to outrun the corners. He's running east and west and finally decided to go north and south. See, that, that's why I give the guys in the studio a hard time about calling him a rhino. You know, rhinos go straight ahead. Jones is showing some agility to get to the corner. I mean, that's a scary thought. A rhino having the ability to turn the corner and turn on the Jets. But Daryl Jones, he's trying to tell everybody, lost a couple pounds, now I'm the total package, baby. No longer just north-south. Yeah. Add a little bit of east-west to the running style. Last couple of years when Casey Hansen, including tonight, has gone against the Aggies, uh, 220 yards tonight, 287 a year ago, and here's a little scat back trying to get to the outside. They're just holding on to his jersey. They're not going to let Mr. Farrell go, the senior out of Fayetteville, North Carolina. Tim Farrell on the carry. He doesn't have the mass that Jones has, but he's got the heart determination. Take a look here. It was 
second and three, and he gets the ball, and he's just running and keep the legs going, keep driving, 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 lean forward, and actually picked up the first down. Yeah, he did. He was determined. All you have is my jersey. I'm taking you with me. <laughs> keep going, keep going, keep those legs turned until the whistle blows. That's why they went away from ripaway jerseys, huh? <laughs> the old Earl Campbell special. <laughs> First to ten across midfield. They're in the Aggie territory. That is the Spartans of Norfolk State. Here's Daryl Jones, the Rhino, and the Rhino picks up about five or six yards. <laughs> you like the Rhino, huh? I like the Rhino. I like the bowling ball. See, the bowling ball can bend a little bit. You know, it can bend and strike from different angles. But the Rhino, no matter what, let me tell you, whichever one hits you is going to hurt. I'm going to say, <laughs> if the Rhino hits you, <laughs> watch out. <laughs> So, you know, one thing that, that you're seeing here, you know, we're up here in the booth and we've got the best view, but the defensive scheme that AT's is playing right now is so vanilla. I mean, if you're Norfolk State, you can run the football or you can throw the football because you're getting soft cover three. So you have the ability to basically pick which, which whatever you want to do. Jones again on second down and five hit at the line of scrimmage maybe two yards on the play down to the 35 yard line. He suffered some leg cramps in Bethune Cookman game. In fact a lot of players were cramping up last week. He came in and scored the, the what proved to be the game winning touchdown as they won it over Bethune Cookman last week 38 31 snapping a nine game losing streak to the uh, Wildcats. And I think that was conditioning. I mean he went from being a uh, uh, situational back third and short to now being the featured back and he lost all the way during the offseason now that he's getting all these carries per game his body's not ready for the conditioning factor of it yet third and three Jamar Johnson in motion Daryl Jones straight ahead looks like he has the first down but very close to it depending on where they spot it he had to get to about the 32 and a half he got to the 32 and they're signaling first down. And that was just the momentum there. And that's how you like to see big fellas run the football. You know, when there's no hole there, what do you do? You just lower that tusk. <laughs> you, know, Brian, you lower that tusk and just keep the legs churning, getting that momentum for forward for the first down. That's what we're talking about. The hole's not here at all. But watch him lower the heads, just keep going forward. Lower them, keep going, keep going. They're trying to pull him backwards. That's not gonna happen with that lean and 250 pounds to back you up. First down, spark for Richmond, Virginia is Daryl Jones. And this time they give it to the fullback, Tommy Moore. Tommy Moore, a load at 250 pounds, goes straight into the gut. You know, now you got a little bit different. So you had the the big, you know, you had the big brother, Daryl Jones, the senior, and then they bring in the baby, the freshman. <laughs> and the freshman yeah. goes 5'11, 250 as well. So he, that's his fourth carry of the season. Four. The previous long was a five yard gain. That one went for six. Now, clearly, <laughs> the Norfolk State offense is setting them up for a play action pass. You see it. You Got to be it. coming. Look at number 17 down at the bottom, Jeremy Vickery. One on one coverage. It wasn't even play action. <laughs> he just came out. He just, and it's caught on the far sideline, and they get the first down, and they keep moving the ball. Dexter Bailey. The second catch for him today, the tight end out of Suffolk, number 85. He's a big target at 6'4", 245. Yeah, and this is just a five-step drop on time and curl-flat combination. They covered up the curl for the first time, so Casey Hanson took the underneath route with the five-yard pass, but ended up gaining 10 yards on the completion. So that's just reading your keys, and when you have that much time in the pocket, it's easy to read the defense. This is the first possession for either team in the second half. Norfolk State has gone since the second half started as they give the ball again to Tommy Moore and they've used up almost eight minutes yeah, this clock. Was, yeah one of those drive you know drive and just kill the clock type possessions and trust me coach Adrian defensive minded coach he does not mind and I'm gonna put him in every category even offensive minded head coaches love those drives that eat up four or five minutes off the clock so this is almost eight minutes and this is the 14th play of the drive coming up and they're forcing it too I mean that last play there were nine men in the box and they still ran the football so they're not doing check with me they're coming out just forcing their will on the Aggies right now second down Daryl Jones back in there Daryl Jones and he is hog tied before he could turn the corner and let's go to Mike Gleason in the studio for an update. Charlie, Southern Miss probably adapted to that blue field because they're making a move on Boise State. Jeremy Young goes upstairs, finds Sean Nelson for the touchdown. And what do they do? They miss the extra point. So it's 28-16. Broncos on top by 12. 
It's very interesting, huh? Strength miss out of Conference USA came into the game uh, two and one, and of course, uh, Boise State also two and one in the Western Athletic Conference. This is a third and eight now. Let's see what they come up with if they can convert here. Hanson throws into the corner. And it looked like interference back there. It was. I mean, the <laughs> defender was all over the receiver. And, and, I, and still he and caught he, it. He, caught he it still anyway. caught it anyhow. And I tried to see who the receiver. That is uh, J Jamar Johnson. Defender was all over Jamar. And they still managed to get it in the end zone. A 16-yard touchdown pass. The third of the evening for Casey Hansen, who came Open. into the game without any Defense. touchdown Number passes. 45. That penalty is declined. Result of the play is a touchdown. You know, the new trend in college football is to go after these big wide receivers. Talking about guys like Julio Jones down in Alabama, the number one recruited wide receiver because he's 6'5", and everybody wants a new Calvin Johnson. And why? Because the smaller defensive backs can't get physical with the big boys when they decide to go up and make big plays like that. So it's a seven more points put on the board. Here's the throw out into the flat. The catch by Jamar Johnson. And we'll be back. What is this guy doing? I can't get through the gate. The gate is narrow. Unbelievable. Doctoral Research Institution, North Carolina A&T State University produces the best and brightest. Since 1891, A&T has been making positive strides and showing Aggie pride worldwide. Now under the helm of Chancellor James C. Rennick. Explore. Discover. Become. Nissan Titan is a strategic vision total quality award leader. It's also the only truck tough enough to deliver college football's most coveted award. The Heisman, brought to you by the Nissan Titan. Is credit card debt stressing you out? We researched all options. BSI, the nation's leading nonprofit consumer credit counseling service, was the best solution. BSI reduced our high interest rates. With BSI, we make one low monthly payment. Our debt is finally going down. I fell behind. My mom saw an Oprah show about nonprofit debt management. She said, call BSI. BSI restored my good credit. If credit card debt is stressing you out, call BSI now. 36-20, Norfolk State out in front. Casey Hanson, no touchdown passes coming into the game. And he comes out with a big drive, 16 plays, 76 yards. More importantly, they used up 834 off the clock. They've had the ball the whole second half. The Aggies just touching it. You're talking about a demoralizing effect that it can have on a team. And here's a short kick once again, making sure that uh, the Mr. Mr. Robinson, the fast, speedy receiver, doesn't bring it down the field. And let's take a timeout. We'll be back. 622 remaining. And we're here in the third quarter. North Bergen versus St. Peter's Prep, Friday at 8 on ESPNU. Saturday on ESPNU at noon, the Temple Owls battle Army. Then at 3.30, Louisville faces NC State. And at 7, the Panthers take on the Cavaliers. The action kicks off Saturday at noon, only on ESPNU. Maybe your car is trying to tell you something. Maybe it's asking for the hard-working gasoline at Phillips 66, gas specially formulated to help clean fuel injectors in five tanks, which helps you maximize mileage and reduce emissions. Give your car what it's asking for. 
Give it Phillips 66. Hard working gas. When you get into a Volkswagen, it gets into you. Professional driver on a closed course. Now through October 1st, get a 2008 Touring 2 V6 for only $3.99 a month. I used to suffer from acne on my chest and back. The pimples were painful, unsightly, and embarrassing. But then I started using Panoxyl Foaming Acne Wash. Panoxyl Foaming Acne Wash is a treatment that works two ways. Its rich, creamy lather gently foams away excess oil from skin to cleanse and unclog pores, while the benzoyl peroxide medication works to kill the bacteria that cause acne. Enjoy healthy, clear skin with Panoxyl Foaming Acne Wash. Panoxyl Foam from Stiefel Labs is available at CVS and Walgreens. <laughs> Back here in Greensboro, North Carolina, the Spartans leading it by 16 over the Aggies. The Aggies getting the ball for the first time in the second half with 6.22 to go. And here's the handoff. And here's Ferguson. And Ferguson making something happen. Gets the first down across midfield into Spartan territory. Great job by Michael Ferguson. I guess he had all that time over on the sideline marinating <laughs> on what he was going to do. And he got this. And great job of finding the cutback lane. Good vision here. Making some cuts and turning on some speed there and it was Dustin Johnson with the touchdown saving tackle. He had a 52 yard run in the first half. He already has 100 over 100 yards in this game 114 in the contest. Michael Ferguson. And they give it to him once again and he back to the line of scrimmage maybe a yard play you know he talked to Pete Adrian and he talks about this team compared to last year's team and of course this is his third year and it takes you time to build your program he was even given a two year contract extension by the athletic director Marty Miller and you know what it made it so interesting is he lost 27 seniors from last year's team but he says he probably has more talent and more depth on this team this year yep and these are his kids and you know one thing he's always talking about he's cleaning up in Virginia he said in the Tidewater area, I take pride in the fact that we have a great recruiting classes and they're all participating. They're local kids from the state of Virginia. In trouble, the sack attack by the Spartans on the quarterback, Herbert Miller. And coming up with the big sack for the Spartans of Norfolk State is Marquez Davis, one of the twins. There are three sets of brothers on this Norfolk State team, two sets of twins, and that's one of them. And you see here, you've got to be thinking 1,001, 1,002. Okay, nothing there. What can I do? Get rid of it. Long play action pass. And that's one of those things that you thought Herb Miller would have got out of his system last year as a freshman, thinking you can still run around on the college football level. Instead, he didn't. And there you see the, the brother act here, Mark Well and Marquez, a twin, Sean and Sharon, children's twins, and Sharon and Curlin are brothers. Curlin is the freshman. His brother's a senior. Here's a pass complete on the near sideline to Mike Caldwell, and Caldwell gets it back down inside the 45 to about the 43-yard line. It's still going to bring up a fourth down situation for the the Aggies of North Carolina a and And that's why you can't afford to get sacked as a quarterback because even if you have a successful play and you pick up 8 to 10 yards, you're just getting back to the original line of scrimmage. You know, when you talk about those twins for Norfolk State, you know, Miguel and Marquez, I mean, those are the best football players on this defense, too. And they both go 6 feet, 232 pounds, and I'm assuming Miguel's the older one because he weighs 232 and his younger brother <laughs> weighs 230 pounds. So those extra two pounds probably were made up in the womb. 352 the time remaining third quarter and we'll be back. When hot molten rock ash and gases erupt and escape from deep below the surface it often results in a touchdown. For those who have what it takes on the inside, Russell has what it takes on the outside. Two of the best high school football programs in New Jersey battle it out on the gridiron. 
North Bergen versus St. Peter's Prep, Friday at 8 on ESPNU. If you're one. Mercy, compassion for the weak, forgiveness for the wicked. On this night, there will be none. WWE No Mercy, John Cena versus Randy Orton. Who will be the last man standing? The Undertaker versus Batista in a battle between a legend and an animal. On this night, there will be no excuses, no remorse, and no mercy. No mercy. Live Sunday, October 7th on Direct TV pay-per-view. Hey, Mom. Where's Dad? In the backyard. Hmm. Just massage the laces and direct the traffic. Boys. Dad? Come on. With up to 14 games every Sunday on DirecTV's NFL Sunday Ticket, I can watch every game and every player. Maddie here is like family now, always warning the lefty. You gotta be kidding me. Look, Maddie, he loves you. Maddie? Brutal. Bring your favorite players home no matter where you live with NFL Sunday Ticket, only on DirecTV. Mike Gleason with the Sports Center U in game update. Boise State came right back. Ian Johnson, that's touchdown number 35 rushing. Tied number two among active players. Just uh, six or seven behind now, the leader. All right, 36 20, our score here. 352 to go, third quarter. Norfolk State with the ball, first and 10, and leading it by 16 at their own 10 yard line. Casey Hansen, a good night tonight for him, and now nothing doing is uh, they were hit right in the backfield. Coming up with the top tie, uh, the tackle is Tyre Glasper. You're talking about the the twins. There they are, Miguel in the blue on either side, Miguel and Marquez, and of course they had an older brother Mondo who played at the University of Delaware. Both of them started their college careers at the University of Delaware, followed their brother up there, and then they matriculated back here to. Norfolk State and of course uh, they're from Newport News Virginia went to Woodside High there oh. the loss of about a yard on the last play play action here's Hanson still has the ball throws and it's caught and it's Wicker again and Wicker still down the sideline and out of bounds what a day for that young man Jeremy Wicker the redshirt freshman from Quantico Virginia He's a special talent. You know, his game reminds me a lot of a college version of Jeremy Bloom, who played University of Colorado on special teams. Not really big with a big build, but just knows how to get open and makes exciting plays. And you take a look at him here, watch him come back for the football, make one guy miss, cut on the dime. Look at that, he even switched arms. Wow, that's, that's that stuff there. He takes good coaching. That's five catches for him today, 172 yards. He also has two touchdowns and a first down right now at the 46 yard line and straight ahead. They keep the ball on the ground for eight. And again, they're carrying the ball with Farrell. Tim Farrell getting some work today. You know, and one of the things, this is starting to play out the way Pete Adrian told us when you talk about depth, because when you look at the depth chart, Jeremy Wicker's number three at that receiver spot. You have Dario Walker, followed by Rashad Howard, then Jamar Johnson on one side with Dickerson, and then Wicker. And then you look at the tailback. You have Daryl Jones, you have Andre Cook, you have Vince Hicks, you have Tommy Moore. You know, Hicks is hurt. He's got a quad, so he's not in the lineup. And you've seen this uh, Tim Farrell carrying the ball tonight. And they've picked up the first down across or inside the 45 to about the 40 yard line. And I think what you'll see with all that depth is Jeremy Wicker earning some more playing time. I mean, that's how you move up the depth chart. You come in the game, when you get your opportunity, make big plays, and Jeremy Wicker has answered the call. He's just a red shirt freshman. As my buddy Lim Barney used to say, don't lay your glove down because it'll fit somebody else's hand. <laughs> that's true. That's true. <laughs> Here in Greensboro, North Carolina, welcome to. College football prime time presented by Buffalo Wild Wings along with Charlie uh, Jay Walker. I'm Charlie Neal. I know who I am. I think so. You're Batman. I'm Robin. <laughs> it is first down and 10. Play action. Hanson. Ah, missing communication between himself and Jamar Johnson. Yeah, I mean, that was the one time with the pre snap read that you can't throw to the outside. They have press coverage, miscommunication there. And you know, one thing that we talked about during the break, and you'd ask me why was Norfolk State making this look so easy, and I said because they're playing such vanilla coverages at North Carolina a and and I don't know if that's because they're trying to still evaluate their talent to see what they can do, but you know, if you're going to play in the MEAC Conference, you can't come out with plain Jane vanilla coverages. You've got to disguise it, add a little flavor, mix it up. 
And look at that. 400 yards tells you you need to add a little chocolate to that vanilla and mix it up and put some spice to that defense because that Aggie defense right now doesn't have any bite. And right. One thing you alluded to, they were well on their way of giving up another 40 points in a contest. 200 yards plus yards now for the Spartans of Norfolk State. Casey Hansen, 290 yards, one of his best days. He threw for 2,166 yards a year ago. And that's the best that a quarterback has thrown for yardage in, from Norfolk State since 1997, since they came into the MIAC. Hanson wants to go to the air once again. Looking in the middle. Caught. This time it's Walker. And Walker has the first down inside the 15 to about the 13-yard line. When Daryl Walker showing that he's versatile, came into this game averaging 13.2 yards per catch. So what that means to me is every time he touches it, first down and living up to the hype. He's a deep guy and probably the fastest guy on the Spartan team. Showing a good job of running the curl route, finding the soft spot in the cover two, and Hanson having the patience to allow Walker to get to that second window in the zone. He's caught five tonight. That is Dario Walker. And here's the Rhino, or is that Cook in there? They've Andre Cook, the junior out of Chesapeake, Virginia, and Oscar Smith wearing number two. Came into the game with ten carries in the ball game. So to bring up second down, they actually lost about a yard on that play. You know, one of the things they had some people there getting back into the lineup that, that injured in the camp, like Jerome Johnson. He was in the, in the camp. He broke a bone in his right foot as Hanson goes to the air and has a complete. This is the tight end again. Looks like Bailey. Dexter Bailey on the reception and Dexter takes it down to about the nine yard line. It's very close to another first down. Watch Bailey appear right in front of the quarterback. I mean, you can hit that pass, Charlie. I think my daughter's Jasmine Janine can hit that ball. <laughs> if the tight end, if the linebackers separate that wide, and it's a clear open throw. Six yard pass, lean a little bit forward, makes it a third and one. You've got to tighten up the defense. This is so vanilla, the looks that A&T is giving this Norfolk State offense. In motion, Jamar Johnson. Should be the last play of the third quarter. They keep it on the ground with the big fullback, the bruiser, Tommy Moore, at 250 pounds, who gets the first down with ease at the 11, and that's going to bring the third quarter to an end. So we have 15 minutes of football remaining here in Aggieland, and the Spartans threatening once again, leading 36 to 20. Saturday Night Football on ABC, USC, Washington, Saturday at 8 Eastern. When hot, molten rock, ash, and gases erupt, and escape from deep below the surface, it often results in a touchdown. For those who have what it takes on the inside, Russell has what it takes on the outside. Maybe your car is trying to tell you something. Maybe it's asking for the hard-working gasoline at Phillips 66, gas specially formulated to help clean fuel injectors in five tanks, which helps you maximize mileage and reduce emissions. Give your car what it's asking for. Give it Phillips 66. Hard-working gas. Bye, hon. Find us a good one. Bye. With two million vehicle listings on cars.com. There it is. You can find the right car for you. Cars.com. This community is amazing. And the pavilion is really where everybody comes together. What about a burger? Can I get a burger? How about the fish? The fish done? Are your potatoes ready? There's rib. Today is all about the game and friends coming out and grilling out together. I think they think we live here. I know they think we live here. We told them we live here. We live down the street. That street? Right no, no, the other one. That street? Yeah. We're part of the community in a weird way. <laughs> Their cookouts are legendary over here. I love this neighborhood. Own a timeshare? Turn it into cash. Timeshares only sold our timeshare fast and for the price we wanted. And they gave us a $1,000 shopping spree. Introducing the timeshares only $1,000 shopping spree bonus. 
Call now. Learn how to turn your timeshare into cash and get a $1,000 shopping spree. And we'll also send you this free information kit, including 10 secrets to timeshares. This offer is only good while supplies last, so don't delay. Call Timeshares Only, the most trusted name in timeshares. Call 800-383-3956. Saturday on ESPNU at noon, the Temple Owls Battle Army. Then at 3.30, Louisville faces NC State. And at 7, the Panthers take on the Cavaliers. The action kicks off Saturday at noon, only on ESPNU. As we start the fourth quarter here, you just saw Casey Hansen going to the air. Right now, he has his team poised at the 11-yard line. First down and 10. And the pitch to the second man. To him. We're going to have a touchdown by Tim Farrell. Tim Farrell takes it in from 11 yards out. And the lead is increased to 42-20. Are you talking about controlling the football? The Spartans of Norfolk State in the third quarter, 12 minutes and what, 24 seconds, 26 seconds. The defense was on the field for a long time because they couldn't make a play. And as you get down in the red zone, you're supposed to have more contact, not less contact. Tim Farrell walks into the end zone untouched by an Aggie defender. So the extra point is good, and it's 43 to 20. Last year, North, uh, I should say North Carolina A&T held up just three teams under 40 points. Howard to 26, Delaware State to 37, and Morgan State to 32. This year, they have held just two teams to under 40 points so far this season. Winston-Salem scored 41 on them. Hampton 59. They held Prairie View to 22. And North Carolina Central to 27. They've given up 43 already tonight. You know, and it's, it comes down to the scheme. And I'm not going to question the defensive calls or the defensive coordinator, Demetrius Adams. I mean, that's what happens when you have babies playing against grown men. You're limited in your firepower. You can't go out there and call sophisticated blitz schemes and blitz programs. You have to keep it very basic so your football team can your defensive team especially can develop a higher football IQ for what you're trying to accomplish on the defensive end of the football but if they keep playing coverages like they're playing tonight then teams will be able to have the ability to hold the ball for 12 minutes and 30 seconds in a quarter which is just unbelievable and the last two drives by Norfolk State they only had the ball twice in the second half one drive took 356 and the ball goes down and the, maybe the Spartans have it again and that that's something that you have to talk about at halftime after the first time they do it you tell your up men fair catch that pooch kick every time it comes your way and they never fair copped it one time. So Pete Adrian and staff just kept going to the well over and over again. And it finally caught up to the Aggies. Their reckless play on special teams. So for the second time, they muff a kick in the game. And it's cost them each time. Yeah, I mean, you've got to call that fair catch. I mean, because nothing good's going to happen. Even if you catch the ball, you're going to get wiped out by a, by a missile coming at about 200 miles an hour in the form of a special teams player. And then you sit there, and if you don't do it, and you let the ball hit the ground, you don't know which way it's going to bounce. Right. And especially, uh, all it has to do is travel 10 yards. And I don't think what is happening is these kids are aware that uh, about the 10-yard rule. And that's something you have to tell them. You have to tell those up backs, hey, you catch the ball. If you got a chance to catch it, fair catch it, and we'll get the ball with great field position. You got a man wide open. And he didn't see it. Now he's going to let it go. He's still open. <laughs> still open. He was open for a long time. Touchdown. Charlie. It was Walker. He's still open, as you said, Jay. Oh, my One goodness. play. They go 33 yards, and Hanson throws his four touchdown pass of the day. I mean, that was a great job by Dario Walker, actually, too, because he was open on the left side. But once he saw his quarterback, Scramble to the right. Hanson's a little shaken up over on the sideline. I think he got hit as he let that one go. And, you know, Corey Jones, Coach uh, Adrian, said we were going to see him anyhow. 
but he's getting up and kind of walking off onto his own power. He uh, just uh, got uh, his uh, bell rung a little uh, bit. No, no doubt he's done for the night, though. I mean, you get a 28-point lead, you almost look like coach. <laughs> what all do I have to do? Really get hurt before you take me out of right. this contest? I've got my stats for the day. I'm good to go. Point after is good. 50 to 20 is our score. A 30-point lead. Let's see what led to this last touchdown. It all started off with poor special teams. They didn't call for the fair catch. Norfolk State got it. What do teams do? They come out and get them hard while you can. Hanson had time to scan the whole field. Touchdown, Norfolk State. No curb appeal. Hate the color. Oh, honey, this is it. Uh, what you got there is an infestation. A lot of life happens in your car. Conoco and 76 Quality Pro Clean Gasolines help clean your engine as you drive. The pink wasn't so bad. So you can focus on more important things. Conoco and 76 Quality Pro Clean Gasolines. So what does this Jetta have that the Corolla doesn't? Well, power windows, variable intermittent wipers, four-wheel disc brakes, more horsepower, electromechanical power steering and traction control. When you get into a Volkswagen. Does it have six airbags? Standard? It gets into you. Yeah. Now through October 1st, get a 2008 Jetta 2.5 liter S for just $197 per month. insurance company they call it liberty mutual responsibility what's your policy liberty mutual well nothing transforms a room quite like a fat head the size the amazing detail but uh capturing a moment that big it's it's not easy as a fat head photographer you've got to be fast you have to have reflexes like a jungle cat like a ninja like a like a ninja cat you need to be half cat half ninja Maybe 60-40 Ninja. Real big Fathead. The biggest players, the biggest moments. Never look so real. Get yours today at Fathead.com. And there you see 50 to 20 is our score in the fourth quarter. And Casey Hansen will hand off here. And well, this is a pass. He finally finds uh, Walker. But as he started looking downfield, the linebacker Jameson Hedgepets from North Carolina A&T was locked and loaded in on the quarterback Hanson. He was going to take him out regardless of if he had the ball or not. Let's see if they figure this out now and come up with this, the catch of the pooch kick. There, there it go. is, another one. <laughs> fair catch fair called for, and it is made right at the 32-yard line. Did you see how early he called that fair catch? Oh, yeah, that he's smart. He had been coached up on, on yeah. the sideline. It was uh, Giorgio Laurent who came up with it. But, you know, we talked about at the beginning of the game, Jay, the fact that Casey Hansen hadn't thrown a touchdown pass all year long. If you're going to get well and you're going to come out of the slump, or finally get it in the end zone by way of the air. It's not a bad way to do it. You get four tonight. Yeah, four touchdowns, and you know you make up for lost time, and that basically neutralizes the game against Rutgers when they, when the whole team got shut out. So I think that you know this is good medicine, and you know get him back into a groove and get his confidence level up there. He came in struggling. He had a zero to three interception touchdown ratio, and now. Hey, pick it back up, and he thinks he's the best quarterback since sliced bread. And he hasn't been intercepted at all this evening, and uh, they keep it on the ground. That is the Aggies. Again, Ferguson, Ferguson the running the ball straight ahead. A gain of eight on the play. And you're talking about Casey Hansen, 19 of 27, 351 yards tonight, four touchdowns and no picks. And more importantly for the Spartans of Norfolk State, six of their last seven possessions, they have scored one way or the other. And I would say, what, 16 points have come 
awful mistakes by the Aggies of A&T. And, and that's the key is having the ability to capitalize. And you never thought that North Carolina A&T, I'm sure the coaching staff didn't think they would score 20 points on them as they try a little end around here with Curtis Walls. And if the offense, if the defense is struggling and they gave up 20 points, so they were struggling the first half, the offense had to pick it up. And, and they picked it up and Norfolk State is rolling as we take a look at the longest losing streaks in the football championship subdivision and unless uh, the Aggies could come up with 31 points real quick that number 20 will go to 21 and then you know you're wondering where do you see the end in sight I, but I do think if they can figure out a way to stop some people Charlie I mean that's what it's coming down to. they can't stop anybody well consistent play is what their weakness is when you talk to Lee Fobbs you know they have a pretty good defense and they have a good running back of course we've seen that at my well, we'll go back we'll back up you said they have a pretty good one defense. no uh, well, tonight they didn't play well over the late past, over the past 20 games when have they not given up 20 30 points 26 to Howard that's mama model but Howard can't score on a basketball team so you know you can't take credit for that because when you gave up 26 okay. points to Howard you didn't score so they have a, a, a bad defense <laughs> let's say the defense is not consistent I won't know they're consistent bad. in giving up points and that's the problem they've got to stop people we can sit here and talk but you about know you think this is the best passing team they faced this year the Aggies yes oh uh, yes and I actually I really do think that Norfolk State has a nice pass attack this is one of the best passing attacks I've seen in the conference in a long time since flight 238 was up in Hampton University with Jerome Mathis but you know you can run it you can pass you can do whatever you want on this defense all day for Miller being chased finally gets it go and it's intercepted intercepted on the far sideline and run down the sideline and coming up with the INT for the Spartans of Norfolk State is and Andre Twine the senior I believe that was Twine the senior it, it, it was Andre Twine you know and you see here it's just a matter of you know time and time again trying to do too much and you got to pay for the mistakes you, you know your quarterback gets hit there when you watch film the offensive coordinator says good I'm glad you got hit because you shouldn't have been making that play that you got yourself into. to add insult to injury Jay there was an ineligible receiver downfield yeah I mean look at the look at the body English right now but his defense I mean you know I'm a body English type of guy and if you look at them they can't believe they're back on the field. It's been a tough night, and they're looking. And that's where I think the defense has had some problems. Not so much because they don't. Early in the ball game, they were playing pretty good. But, but when you but when it, you give up a, a, a 12 uh, minute drive, that's the defense's fault. Get off the field. Make a stop. I mean, you well, have to hold. You, said, you have to hold the merit to your face on that one. I, I think the case is, you know, when the turnovers that, that kill you, and you don't have your offense yeah, putting up yeah. points at the right time, but. I mean, this is just, you know, defensively, it's very plain. The defense has to do a better job, and I think what hurts is when they do a good job and they get the ball back for their offense, the offense doesn't capitalize there. But I still say you can move the ball up and down the field you want, but until you learn how to stop people, yeah. you're going to keep on and, losing. You know, it's just a matter of how much you're going to lose by. And you know, Lee Fobbs is, you know, he's hurting inside. He's used to being in winning programs, played at Grambling, Fetty Robinson. And uh, 30 years as an assistant at one double A programs or bowl championship subdivision uh, in terms of uh, teams that he's coached at like Alabama Texas A&M so he knows what it takes to win and a lot of it has to do with the personnel that you're able to recruit and, and I like Lee Fobbs and the reason why he's going to be a good recruiter and this program's going to get better is because he is a character coach mm -hmm. I mean you know you get him into a living room with a mama and a papa and an auntie and them oh yeah and, he's going to get him he's going to get him and he's a good guy I mean that speaks for the character of Lee Fobbs and you know you want them to have the patience down here because you know I'm getting on him now because his defense is just absolutely killing me but at times they show sparks of being very good yes and, they do and and they have growing. some players back there that that can play they're just young they're just young so the Spartans get the ball once again this is a third down situation and they put the ball and it was almost intercepted as Corey Jones is in there at quarterback and that ball deflected by the Aggies you see Tyre Glasper putting it. Wow. He almost came up with it. <laughs> and, and now we know why Corey Jones is the backup quarterback for Norfolk State. Yeah, not that the did, starting that, quarterback. That, that wasn't uh, Casey Hansen <laughs> throwing that ball. He threw that ball right in the face mask of Glasper. Glasper was like, I can't believe 
Are you looking at me? Are you going to throw the ball to me? I'm on the other team. Only the second time tonight that Brian Jackson has punted the ball for the Spartans of Norfolk State in a fair catch. Signal for and caught downfield by Cosby. So the Spartans go on defense once again, but they lead it by 30 points here in Greensboro. Good morning, NFL fans. It's Dick Sporting Goods Fan Friday. So suit up with authentic Reebok NFL apparel and show your true colors. Every Friday this season, be prepared for fierce rivalries. Use every drive, every bump and run to go the distance. Wear your team out with authentic Reebok NFL apparel. Dick Sporting Goods Fan Fridays. I'm Danica Patrick, IndyCar driver and GoDaddy girl. I know a little bit about speed, so take it from me. If you want a fast way to make a name for yourself on the internet, GoDaddy has everything you need. GoDaddy got me online fast. And they can do the same for you. Dot com names as low as $1.99. When you have something to say, say it at GoDaddy.com. Two of the best high school football programs in New Jersey battle it out on the gridiron. North Bergen versus St. Peter's Prep, Friday at 8 on ESPNU. What do you want in a home? Everybody has a different idea, yet everybody should expect the same things in a mortgage. Introducing No Fee Mortgage Plus, only from Bank of America. No application fee or closing fees. No private mortgage insurance. Plus, close on time and best value guarantees. The opportunity to get the mortgage you've always wanted for the home you've always wanted. No Fee Mortgage Plus. Call now to get pre-qualified or go to Channel 115 to learn more. Horsepower is here, and no leading synthetic oil delivers more power than Q horsepower, which is why it's recommended by Ferrari for every oil change. New Q horsepower. Unleash all your horses. ESPNU College Football presented by Buffalo Wild Wings. You have to be there. And in part by Dick's Sporting Goods. Every season starts at Dick's. Along with Jay Walker, Charlie Neal here in Greensboro. 30 point lead. It was a nine point lead at halftime by the Spartans, but they've come out and put up 21 unanswered points here in the second half. It was 29 20. And here it is, the yards per half. You see it there as uh, the Aggies keep the ball on the ground and they actually lose a yard or two on the play. So many little things that North Carolina A&T just did not do right in this ball game to give themselves a chance at the victory. I mean, I like the fact they scored on the opening drive and they, you know, it was a chance to see if they could play with the lead. And they did that, but then they gave the lead right back. And we talked to Coach Lee Fobbs last night. We, one of the things we talked to him about was how about losing becoming contagious and he had a, a quote on he said realistically I can sit here and tell you no but to be honest with you it happens I mean you know there are some kids that are getting used to losing and we still got a couple that we've got to weed away from the program but it's not going to affect me or my coaching staff and we're going to continue to coach these kids hard and 90 percent of the team is still fighting hard all the time and believing in themselves and believing in the vision and you know they had you know they were in a Good contest last week. You yep. know, they just came in on short end of the stick, and, and that was good to hear him say, "Man, it was exciting to be able to coach again in the fourth quarter." I'm gonna tell you, when 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 this program gets back to where it's gonna be, back to the glory days of A&T, there'll be no happier man than Lee Five, and I actually think that he can get it done. And you know, one of the things we talk about, he said he knows where the future lies, and one of the things is he only has seven or eight seniors on this squad. Yeah. So you have the nucleus of these teams coming back. Just hope they can keep themselves together mentally to get ready for next yeah, season. He thinks he's got some good skill positions, but he thinks he needs help in the trenches. And you know, I'll say he's not like any other team 
in the FCS that needs that. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody on double A need good on, linemen, need good linemen in the trenches. The defense, yes. right. But right. he said, we've got some guys that we want to get, and if we can get them, we'll be okay. And look at this. I mean, Six seniors, 31 juniors, 27 sophomores, 20 freshmen. There so, it is. And so, that's why I say he knows where the future lies. And I think the key number there is he's got 47 kids, if you count the freshman class and the sophomore class, that are his kids. That he, he held accountable for. And those are the guys you see playing on the football field today. And in the future, and they're going to compete in the MEAC. Well, 12 of the 20 losses coming into today's game will buy 22 or more points for the Aggies. And it looks like this is going to be, as we get a flag for delay of game, it looks like this one is going to be 20. Prior to the snap, delay of game, offense, number 43, five yard penalty, remains fourth down. This is going to be 13 of 21 losses by 22 or more points. Yeah, I mean, look at that. This is the punter. It's not the linebacker. No, that's the punter, Lee Woodson, junior out of Reedsville. <laughs> well, he's a 215 pounder. That, he's what? 215 pounder. I see more than 215 30. on that. Well, <laughs> some of it's still on the plate. <laughs> <laughs> Gets it off. <laughs> and the catch is made. No fair catch call for. And the return back down the field for Rashad Howard. The senior out of Newport News, Virginia, came in as the fourth leading kickoff return man in the MIAC and preseason second team all kick returner. They put, uh, that is, this Spartan team, five people on the preseason all MIAC team, five or four of them were on the defensive side of the ball. And, and I'll let you know that although the record may not indicate it, that your peers know what you're up to in Norfolk, that you are building a foundation and you got some talent. And any coach will tell you, you can't win without talent. Once you've got talent, you expect it to win. That's why the pressure's on, Coach Adrian, this season. At the 35 of the Aggies, Corey Jones in at quarterback. His hands off. And uh, Spartans keep the ball on the ground. And it's Andre Cook. You know, here you're talking about uh, what's happened with them in terms of the last few years, but they're right up there in terms of MEAC championships. George Small took them to a championship in 2003. The Aggies uh, have six throughout the history of their presence in the MEAC since 1970, one of the original founding schools. South Carolina State leads that category with 11 championships second down and one Farrell who has a touchdown already gets the first down inside the 25 to the 23 yard line so a couple of big games coming up in the MEAC this weekend Jay you have uh, Delaware State at Hampton, that's the big one. Hampton going in at 3-0 in conference play. Dell State 1-0. Then Morgan State is down in Daytona Beach. They'll take on Bethune-Cookman. That's Bethune's homecoming this weekend. And Bethune comes in at 0-2 in conference play, especially after their loss last week to the Spartans up in uh, Norfolk, Virginia. Winston-Salem is up at Howard. FAMU plays Tennessee State. I believe that's in Atlanta. As we get a call going to the right side with Andre Cook. On the carry, and then uh, South Carolina State has the weekend off. I think you know you've got some huge games. There. Obviously, the big one. You talk about Delaware State versus Hampton, two of the top-ranked teams in the SBN poll and, and all the black college football going head-to-head. -head. Then the other interesting matchup there, I think, is Morgan State going down to Bethune-Cookman yep. homecoming with each of them having a conference loss. That's a must-win game for both teams. For both teams, yeah. Bethune can't afford to go 0-3 in conference play. It is second down. And those, you know, it's these secondary people that are coming in for help, uh, you know, and, and guys like Cook and, and more guys who are not a regulars, they get a chance to show what they can do because they've been practicing against the first defensive team all year. They're like the scout team, so they get a chance to do something. But one of the things I wanted to talk a little bit about is next year, the championship subdivision is going to expand the number of teams in the playoffs from 16 to 18. They're going to add a conference. It's just a matter. It gets an automatic bid. And we'll talk a little bit more about it after this play. But, you know, it's just a matter of which conference it goes to. Now, there are three conferences that have an opportunity 
to uh, get the automatic bid. Of course, the SWAC is one, which we probably know they want. Yes. The other one is the Big South with Liberty, Gardner Webb, Georgia, uh, Charleston Southern, Coastal Carolina, and VMI. And then the Great Liberty. West Conference with Cal Poly, UC Davis, North Dakota State, right. South Dakota State, and Southern Utah. Yes, and North Dakota State, I had a chance to watch them last year, and they were one of the best teams that I saw. And, you know, it was a shame that they were ineligible for postseason play at that play, but that's a good conference in terms of playing some good football. And, you know, we know why the SWAC won't do it, because you got so many schools that have games after the regular season ends, Grambling and Southern, and as well as Alabama State. But, you know, when they do this, you know, it's interesting. And, you know, you go a little bit further on that. The plan is to go to 18, and then after that, the next step is to go to 24 teams. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the thing is, I think what the committee is looking at is where they're going to put that extra week. Yep. In terms of adding that uh, those extra teams, I think they're gonna give somebody a bye week. Well, that, I think, could, that could happen. I think they'll give two teams a bye week. And what troubles me a little bit is when you go to 24, that's a bit much. Yep. I mean, these are college kids, and they do want to celebrate their Christmas vacation if they can. Well, there's a couple other conferences that have been eligible but have never been selected: Northeast, Metro Atlantic, and the Pioneer, and of course the Ivy League. Due to their commitments, do not play in the championship subdivision playoffs. Well, do the Ivy League not compete in the playoffs just for academic reasons? It says they, due to their commitments. <laughs> that's that's that's, that's all academic. they've ever said. I'm, I mean, yeah, you know, their commitments their are finals. finals. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, so, you know, which, which is something, you know, because you know they've had some good football players come out of that out of the Ivy League in recent years. You're talking about Matt Burke and. You know, I remember Keith Elias when he played, so the, the level of football in the Ivy League is getting better. You'd like to think, could they do it? And Hampton the next week, not this week, is going to go up and play Princeton, one of those Ivy League schools. It'll be a good one. And, you know, part of the reason I'm intrigued by it is the one thing that most FCS teams struggle with is finances and resources. Ivy League's not struggling with finances and resources, so no. if they made a commitment to it, they could really have an impact. And they keep the ball on the ground on a fourth down play, and they're going to turn it over. That is the Spartans on downs, and now with under 4.50 to go, 4.49 to be exact, the Aggies, trailing by 30, will take over. Norfolk State University was founded in 1935 in the midst of the Great Depression. With humble beginnings, NSU began to fulfill the dream of students seeking a college education. Today, more than 6,100 students attend NSU, majoring in subjects ranging from accounting to zoology. To meet the demands of the future, NSU is positioning itself to become a science and technology powerhouse by building an applied research facility. Visit the Norfolk State University website at www.nsu.edu for more information. Only the Nissan Titan has a Utilitrack cargo system. And the longest crew cab bed in its class. You choose the tie-down points, you choose the angle. Because Nissan thinks when you put something in your bed, it should stay there. The new 2008 full-size Nissan Titan. The Titan of trucks. Now get up to $3,500 Nissan cash back or 1.9% APR financing. Gerber, the baby people you've known since you were a baby, offers you a way to prepare for your child's future with the Gerber Life Grow Up Plan. It's a $10,000 whole life insurance plan that costs just pennies a day. At age 21, that coverage automatically doubles to $20,000 with no increase in premiums. Plus, the plan guarantees up to $100,000 worth of insurance by age 28. Give your child a head start on their future today with the Gerber Life Grow Up Plan. Call 1-800-652-0101 today. ESPNU brings you college sports 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. The passion, the anticipation, the excitement. Wide open, touchdown! Every season. This is for three, got it! Every reason to watch. And that's gonna do it! Every sport, all year round. Tomorrow night at 7.30, the latest news and analysis on ESPNU Recruiting Insider. At 8, two New Jersey powerhouses battle. North Bergen versus St. Peter's. ESPNU, always in season. Pete Adrian, his team leading by 30 here with 4.49 to go. And a route to snapping a six game road losing streak. As the Aggies get the ball, you know, you're talking about the Pro Football Hall of Fame. The Aggies do feature a member from their family in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. We're talking about Elvin Bethay, 
who played here. In fact, the MIAC has 10 players, former players, that are in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. The Morgan State has four of those players, and Rosie Brown, Lynn Ford, Leroy Kelly, and Willie Lanier. South Carolina State has three, and Harry Carson, Deacon Jones, and Marion Motley, and Art Shell from Maryland Eastern Shore, who no longer plays football, but they're still a member of the conference in basketball, and Larry Little from Bethune Cookman College. And of course, as I mentioned earlier, Elvin Buffet from the AT family. Wow, what a play. Wow, you know, you talk about having an effort there, and you know, often don't get times to get in there and show what you can got. Well, I want you to take a look at Marcus Dotson here playing the outside linebacker position for Norfolk State. Watch him blow up this play by himself. Slides between two offensive linemen from North Carolina A&T and stuffs the running back in the backfield. He's only a freshman and he's from right down the road, Danville, Virginia. Through his whole body. Yeah. I mean, he had he had 450 pounds coming, coming at, at him, him huh? and he dove right in between all of it and made a great play. Third down and eight. Right now, you're talking about NFL rosters with players from the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference. Norfolk State is, uh, I believe, the only team that in the MEAC that doesn't have a player on an NFL roster right now. I can believe that. I would have thought that Kevin Talley would have made a team, but I guess that he did not. Now, North Carolina A&T has four, and Junius Coaston was with Green Bay, and of course, Curtis Deloach with Carolina, Maurice Hicks with San Francisco, and Jason Horton with uh, Houston. How about my alma mater? Howard? They have a four or five, you know. One. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, we In have... fact, there are 23 players from the MEAC currently on NFL rosters. Five of those 23. Oh boy, what a boom. Five of those those uh, 23 are on practice squads. And the, the uh, return man, Rashad Howard, a little upset with himself for calling for a fair catch. He didn't think he had as much room as he did because of the booming punt that was laid down there by Lee Woodson. That was the right thing to do in this type of game. You know, don't build up your stats on an opponent that's already down. So I'm pretty sure that was pre-called, pre-designed that he was going to signal for a yep. fair catch as soon as he left the punter's foot. Now you wanted to hear your Howard players, so I'm going to give them to you. Thank I you. know you know. America wants to hear it. <laughs> We're America's team. Well, We're Jeffrey, Pope, Jeffrey Pope, he's a yep. defensive back with the Giants. He's yep. on the practice squad. Okay. And you have Tracy White with Green Bay. You have yep. Marcus Douglas with San Francisco. Antoine Buffet with the Colts and Ron Bartell with the Rams. So. Five bison. All defense. And this one is incomplete. And the Spartans bring in another quarterback, Brian Jackson, who was a punter also. And uh, Coach told us we we're going to see him throw the ball a little bit because he, he can roll out and throw the ball pretty good uh, on a sprint from one sideline to another. And uh, he's only punted tonight twice, so we figured we'd let him go in there and play some quarterback. Yeah, huh? You get him a little action. He said he's a good athlete, actually, what he said, which is an oxymoron for me. We talk about a punter being an athlete, but he said when you get him outside the pocket, he's got a nice arm and he can move. So he Man. thinks, you know, he can put a special package in down the road that can be effective. He's from Virginia Beach. Went to Tallwood High, he's a freshman. And he just hands it off this time, and again, carrying the ball for the Spartans is Andre Cook. I mean, when you look at a guy like Andre Cook, he's the smallest of these running backs besides Tim Farrell. Yeah, 5'10", 185. You know, yeah, and he looks solid. He doesn't look 5'10", either, does he? No, he doesn't look 185 either. He looks like a 200-pound running back, but... You know, they just they really get good and that's how you can tell if you got a good program when your backups come in and they're very competitive as well that lets you know that you've got talent on campus yeah. and then from there it's just a matter of pointing that talent in the right direction and watching the good times roll Oscar Smith high is where Mr. Cook hails from this is a third short for the Spartans and they hand it off and they get the first down with Pharrell across the 45 and he doesn't go down too easily, does he? No, I mean, you know, he runs hard. And he's actually getting a chance to play here in his home state. He's from up the road in Fayetteville, North Carolina. And, you know, it's always the small guys that are the toughest guys on the yeah. team, you know. Yeah, they, they'll give you the blues, won't they? Yeah, I mean, he goes 5'7", buck 65, buck 70. They got him 180 on the roster. You know, no. I, it's funny when we go to these practices <laughs> and we say to the kid, hey, stand up. You know, they got you listed at 5'11", and this kid looks like he's 4'2". You know? <laughs> they all want to be a little bit taller. First down for the Spartans with a minute 25 to go in the contest. 
delay of game. Prior to the snap, delay of game. Offense, number 12, five yard penalty, still first down. Now, I noticed you asked about how many players from Howard were playing. You didn't ask it about the other it, HU. It doesn't matter. You didn't ask about the other it HU. It does not Hampton. matter. It does not matter. And for the record, last time six. I checked, last time I checked, it was a Hampton Institute University. It, they have six. HIU. No, no, they've changed that. It's, you sure? Yes. I saw the band last week, and they spelled out HIU. Well, they, they go back. You know, I saw some football teams with throwback <laughs> uniforms on, too. So. <laughs> <laughs> Hampton, in, in terms of football, you see how quickly I got off the subject? I noticed that. Football is not but a you, rivalry. But you cannot dis, uh, dis, uh, dispel the fact that Jerome Mathis had a great kickoff return for Houston last week. Uh, and Justin Durant got Justin to start Durant as a rookie for Jacksonville. You know, so you also have Darian Barnes playing for the Jets. You have a three uh, practice squad players and Alonzo Coleman with Dallas, Andrea Jones, wide receiver with Green Bay, and Nevin McCaskill with Buffalo. May have been uh, released this week, but uh, at last report he was with Buffalo Bills. There's Farrell again. Yeah, I mean, you know, one thing about Hampton, I mean, I don't take anything away from my kid them because it's a healthy robbery just from by going to Howard. That's what we do. <laughs> we hate on Hampton, but I mean, they've been great representatives of the MEAC conference. You talk right. about a classy program and a program that wins with dignity and they keep winning and winning and winning. And Joe Taylor is the dean of all MEAC coaches and he's a good one. And that's going to wrap it up here from Greensboro. In the MEAC for the first time in school history, Pete Adrian has to feel good, and he meets Lee Fobbs at midfield. More importantly for Lee Fobbs, his team loses their 21st straight game, but uh, congratulations to Pete Adrian. What a job he's done in his third year as the head man down in Norfolk, Virginia. 50 to 20, the final score. They increased their record to 2 and 0 in the conference. Three and one overall. Yeah, I think, you know, for Coach Adrian, hey, you got a good football team. They're continuing to grow to get better. And it's going to be interesting to see how they do down the road. And for North Carolina AT, hang in there, Coach Fobbs. Things are going to get better. All right, final score 50 to 20. Norfolk State over to the Aggies. Be sure to tune in next Thursday as ESPNU Primetime College F Football brings you another MEAC matchup. And it's Bethune Cookman taking on Delaware State from Dover, Delaware, live at 7 30 p.m. Eastern. This has been a present of ESPNU. For more, log on to your home for the finest in college sports, ESPNU.com. For Jay Walker, Charlie Neal, final score again, 50 to 20. Now let's head back to the studio and join Mike Gleason for Sports Center U. Take it away, fellas. All right, thanks a lot, Charlie. We tip things off with basketball. John Thompson III, who led the Georgetown Hoyas into the Final Four last year, signed a six-year contract extension with the school. Hoyas will be part of ESPNU's Midnight Madness on October 12th. Thompson with four of his five starters from that Final Four returning in the 2007-2008 season. Former Notre Dame quarterback Demetrius Jones has found a new school and he switched gears. It won't be Northern Illinois. He's decided to become a Cincinnati Bearcat. Brian Kelly, the head coach of Cincinnati confirming that transfer today saying Jones will be in school on Monday Jones of course started that opening game for the Fighting Irish but then uh, lost the job to Jimmy Clausen for game two against Penn State he'll sit next year return next fall with three years of eligibility remaining and hi everybody and welcome to Sports Center you along with uh, Derwin Gray Steve Israel I'm Mike Leeson uh, great to have you with us now of course Thursday night football we have Friday night football not only do we have Friday night football but it is a biggie from the Big East <laughs> West Virginia South Florida Izzy let me ask you this South Florida got him last year but uh, you look at that uh, running passing attack of West Virginia can the Bulls actually think they can do it two years in a row <laughs> well, you know at least it's going to be very tough and the reason why West Virginia has this big Tom quarterback well I guess his name is a uh, Patrick yeah, yeah Pat White Pat White <laughs> brings a lot of punch to the party I tell you the one thing that really makes him special is he can not only just run the ball with his elusive speed he also has a great arm but you know what as a DB when you're covering a receiver and it's not a pass, you say, oh, it's a run. You think you're going to turn around and see a running back, but no, it's Patrick White. And then you have to have the challenge to have the speed to catch him. But you know what? He's not selfish. He has all kind of goodies to share the ball with. Yeah, Steve Slayton, he reminds me of a Tony Dorsett, and he went to University of... 
Pittsburgh. There you go. Hey, this guy at any moment, any time of the game, he can take it to distance. He's tough. He's physical. He plays with pain, and he also can catch the ball out of the backfield. And, yep. and, and it's kind of a three-headed monster now with this rookie, huh? Oh, yeah. I, I, this kid is the best freshman running back in the country. He's all galaxy. He reminds me of a miniature Barry Sanders. He's explosive, but what a luxury. Watch this. Watch this. Oh, that's nice. That's nice. That right there can break some ankles. But what a luxury to bring this kid in off the bench. He's averaging a mind-blowing 11.1 yards per carry. And keep in mind, he's only a freshman. Speaking of freshman, a redshirt freshman, Mike Ford down at uh, South Florida, he's pretty good, too. He was going to go to Alabama, wound up uh, with the Bulls. They don't do anything spectacular stats-wise. They just get the job done week in and week out. Talk about the, uh, the Bulls' offense. The Bulls' offense, it starts up front with Matt Grothy. Grothy is strong. He's gutsy. Most of all, he's the leader of that team. And Durant, Grothy brings a lot of things to the table, but the leadership, and he's being real, real smart with the ball this year. Yeah, and what he does is, is, is he takes his teammates to a level that they possibly couldn't go without his leadership. He reminds me of a young Brett Favre. He's a competitor. He's smart, he understands the offense, and he gets out there and he makes things happen. All right, Izzy, let's go on the other side of the line of scrimmage, that Bulls D. That's where they're really strong, aren't they? <laughs> right, and it starts up front with George Selby, their big-time defensive end. He's leading the nation in sacks, but more importantly, it's the leadership that he brings to that defense. And he has help on the back end, and big corner Mike Jink is there. You see him getting the interception. This kid is the fastest on the team, and there he's showing you with his speed. He's six foot, 200 pounds, and with these type of athletes, and they went into West Virginia and did it last year. They have the confidence together. The rest of the defense is rallying behind these guys. They feel as though they can do it again, Mike. Oh, so this football team, you think, uh, is for real? What I mean by that, no longer an afterthought, no more upsets. They're, they're there to win football games. Oh, no doubt they're for real. 2001, their first year in one double A, they went eight and three. The second year, they went nine and two. And let me remind you of this. It was just 10 years ago that this program started. They are the real deal. Last year, they held the Mountaineers to 132 yards rushing on 37 carries. Tremendous effort. But uh, Mr. Pat White had a sore ankle, and this year he does not. So it's going to be difficult to contain him. Kept the Mountaineers out of a BCS Bowl. Uh, payback on their minds, or do you lose your focus when you start talking about revenge? No, no, you don't. What's in the past is in the past. You press on towards the future. Last year is not going to help them win this year. All they can do is maybe look at some things to motivate them, what they did right, and let everyone feel that exuberance of that win last year. But you know what? That's last year. They have to break down the film this year. And plus, we just, we just talked about Noel Devine. He wasn't on that field last year. So they got some things to prepare for. So the Bulls are for real. I'll tell you what. Uh, you know who's for real out west? A guy by the name of Dennis Dixon. He hit below the Mason-Dixon line when it came to baseball this summer. But so far, the Oregon Duck has been hitting it out of the park with his football cleats on. Attention, football fans. Gear up for the season.